Keep in mind, I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't now. want it to end! I don't want it to be over! I'm hiding! If I don't come out, then it can't be the, the final arc! No, you're Except gonna... it is. It is the final arc. Here on High Rollers D and D, I'm your dungeon master, Marshall. Yes, suffocates himself. Woo! It's gonna be a weird I'm just one. Waiting for him to just. Did that? Oh, 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 oh my god! Oh, oh, did you oh, actually oh, hit your head? On your camera. I you thought you hit the you bottom of no the table. That wasn't even called camera. I really hope it was hers. We can't take talk that. We can't. Let's, we'll, no, get some, we'll get someone to animate it and then we can okay. just talk of it. It was a full slam. It was yeah. a full slam. Yeah, two <laughs> frames. <laughs> like Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Do not. It was. Uh, it's just, just like this. <laughs> <laughs> just to let you know, people might be a bit loopy today. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome. Uh, we are here for another episode of High Rollers D&D. &D. I'm your Dungeon Master Mark Chiller Humes. Joining me this week, we have the full crew. We have... We have... We have... Hello. Quiz Twat. We have Quim. Oh uh, we have... <laughs> Twom. And Quaity. Oh, dear. <laughs> so are you really actually okay? If I just was actually, like, bleeding. Do I need to get the medkit like, out? Blood pouring yeah. down. We do are have you, a medkit. Have you no, you can yourself. Have I'm you got good. a bump? I'm fine. There is I'm actually, like, a, like a, a little got egg. Got He's got a little egg on his head. There's a bump. Oh, no, that's normal. That's been there. That's okay. okay. I was right. trying to hammer that back okay. in. <laughs> That's how that works. With that, uh, we there's no, no real major show notes today. Just going to do a quick reminder. Uh, if you'd like to continue supporting us, especially as uh, we wrap up Aroes and begin making preparations for Campaign 3 and things like that beyond, Patreon is a great way to support us. Uh, you get access to a few behind the scene things, things like uh, the previous VODs of Warhammer Fantasy role-playing game, which we've been playing through. The first couple episodes of that are no, no longer available on Twitch. They are not. So they are only available to YouTube and Patreon, uh, YouTube members and Patreons. Mm -hmm. um, you can also subscribe here on Twitch if you've got Amazon Prime. Don't forget you get free sub every month you can get loads of fun emotes um, and don't forget to go check out our discord as well our high rollers discord we've got a lovely community over there you can share your artwork with everyone you can talk about the episodes live in live stream chat or just talk about D&D in general you can find a D&D group to play with maybe yeah. we do have uh, people that organise games and groups in our discord on, as well it's got it all it's got it all it's got everything you want it it's got it uh, well and that thing <laughs> oh no, we might, might have that in there. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that's um, a secret channel. Secret channel. Secret channel. Um, but yes, uh, so that's it. So don't forget, yeah, all of those places help support us massively, um, especially as we move into the new uh, new campaign, hopefully in the future as well. Um, but that is everything I had on my list. Is there anything? Everyone's everyone's practicing rolling d20. It's well, not going well. Kim just rolled what? Like all of them. Twenty d20. And uh, oh it's my not god, 119. That's very pretty. I've set, set up a ritual in my dice tray to try and max out all the dice that she's going to roll I in a given, circle. I've given Rihanna one of my dice uh, to test no, out whether bless. it's uh, Deanna, whether it's Rihanna's bad luck or whether it is my good luck. Let's see how they counter each other we'll out. Find out. My prime oh, is not doing great. With that in mind, so that is yeah. it for the intro. Let's just get into those dun duns. <laughs> dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun. Back to Erois. Last time, our champions have ascended into astral space, where they have journeyed out to the far edges of the known universe, to the Broken Veil, a war front between the forces of 
Kallus Valkyrian and Hadar. Here, they engaged in an epic astral space battle where they had to rendezvous with uh, their allies in the Valkyrian fleet, fending off several ships and monsters and Hadar spawn that descended upon the Storm Chaser. Sadly, the losses to our champions and their allies have already begun. Uh, with a near death for Kamara, uh, an MP ally who's been a member of the Storm Chaser crew for some time, looking after the, the general sailors and the wolf pack, uh, but was brought back by Sentry using Revivify. But sadly, Lancian, one of the other MPC crew members, uh, passed and was not able to be rescued, along with several of the wolf pack themselves. Nigel, Pascar, and Bob. There you go. Rap, rap in peace. Rap in peace. You have been summoned to Callus's ship, the Tassadar, to discuss the sort of next stage in your assault on the world of Entropis, where you know the prison of uh, Hadar is not necessarily contained or located, but its breach point, its planar kind of crossing anchor can be found. However, to reach Entropis, you will need to fight through a blockade of Hadar spawn and corrupted ships and many other forces that are defending Entropis, including a giant warship, a Ragnarok-class astral ship called the Fenrir, uh, a power that has been perhaps brought back or resurrected by Hadar's magic. And that was the last thing we discussed with you making plans on exactly how you were going to be able to disable this Fenrir and then make your assault onto Entropis. Yeah. Um, Operation Fenrir is a three pronged attack. Meat it fork. is, yeah. Um, it's a meat fork. No, a, tri a trident. Well, I. Meat fork's good. Meat All fork. Right. Well, why don't you, why don't you, Tom Hazel, de describe what this meat fork plan is? Well,. Prong number one of the meat fork, which in Aroas is three prongs. I think it's technically prongs. a trident. No, on Aroas, meat forks have three. Yeah. Um, and tridents have two. It's weird. Um, part one is assisting Thalia, our elite master pilot, in uh, delivering us the bomb <laughs> uh, into the Fenrir, um, down one of the chutes. Star Wars style. Well, into uh, fly Operation into Death the Fenrir Star. itself. Like this is a more a kind of Death Star two situation of flying into the Fenrir with the Twin Star, destroying you know a system or the power core or something that's going to disable the Fenrir's weapons or perhaps the whole ship itself. Like Star Fox. Yes. Against Andros. At yes. The end. There, there is certainly an element of Star Fox and Andros. And in Thalia it. has to trust her instincts. Okay. Nice. Just like. Oh, God. What's prong two? Prong two is, uh, is, is well, <laughs> prong number one can't proceed until prong number two is complete, in which the infiltration of the Fenrir <laughs> takes place. Uh, prong two! <laughs> <laughs> uh, where we send in a group of uh, rowdy, rowdy rousers. No, quiet, 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 quiet. Well, some quiet, quiet. Sneaky boys. Sneaky, sneaky snakes. Sneaky suckers. <laughs> Uh, backed up by some rowdy rousers oh, okay. to, really to muss up some boys and okay. steal the plans and turn down the shields. Turn them down. Just, <laughs> down a little bit. just dim them. Sh <laughs> them Find the dimmer switch. Yeah. And just uh, turn off those shields so that Thalia can get in. Yep. Uh, meanwhile, uh, prong one, prong th now three, th three, three, I think, okay. uh, is to defend the storm chaser during this entire. Uh, Adventure yes. with a team of people who can pilot and defend the storm chaser in, in their own different ways. Um, so, great. Gonna be thank nasty. you very much. Yeah, so we had a discussion off screen or in the tactical room with Starbane. In the captain's Discord. quarters. <laughs> in Discord. The, Discord. In Discord. <laughs> um, and we've come up with some vague outlines of team division of labor. Well, um, they're perhaps not as vague as you thought because the DM has been acting on those being the final decisions. Well, so there, there's one question I have. Locked in. There's one question I have. Okay. But for the, the benefit of our viewers, um, yes. and we've we've named these teams what imagine, we think imagine are... Imagine like an Avengers montage. You remember when like uh, you see Robert Downey Jr. and Mark Ruff. I totally forgot the characters' names. Iron Man Iron and the Hulk. <laughs> 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 I remembered the four. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more complex. Um, they're like deliberating 
and you see them fading in and out of like, hmm, yeah, what? Do, mm. we've, we've been doing that, deliberating oh, in the We looked as like, cool um, as well. Like, yeah. uh, Lying on the floor. Yeah. That kind of shit. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely been, yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys have been making plans. Not just so, on your own as well, the NPCs have been there, like, yeah. finding their insights and, and advantages and things like that as well. Go on, Kim. So the Death Star infiltration team is consisting of Ayla and Nova. Uh, Hope, Scout, and Nanny Norfear. We should probably stop calling her Nanny Norfear. And just Norfear is fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yep. I think she's promoted. she's really only Lucius's nanny. The rest oh, of yeah? you would just call she's her Norfear. Just gonna drop the nanny. Well, I don't think she's your nanny anymore. Oh, fuck off. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you need bedtime stories? Yes. Do you need a little nappy change? I mean, this is yes. Lucius. I mean, yeah. the first one, yes. Okay. Let's not go into the second <laughs> one. That's an area of the internet none of us want to visit. And now uh, it's there. No. <laughs> I planted that seed. Please continue. Uh, the Rebellion Storm Chaser team uh, consists of Sentry and Lucius, uh, Protector, Maximilian, Danica, and this remaining Storm Chaser crew. And finally, the Starfighter Twin Star Squadron um, will have Thalia and Quilly Boy um, on the Twin Star. And here's the question, because yeah. we're like, do we want Araya and Tassadar to also help out in little fire play, play, plane jet <laughs> d- squad fleet? Yeah, uh, I've mentioned this, so keeping in mind, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. If Araya is not yeah. on the Storm Chaser, mm-hmm. Lucius is the only one who can fly the Storm Chaser, and it requires your full action to pilot the Storm Chaser. Basically, so he would Lucius not. It would mean flight. that Lucius would not be able to use yeah. any of his cool spells. Um, Tassadar is absolutely capable of flying a ship. Tassadar is, um, being an Eterna, um, being very magically orientated, like, kind of think of Tassadar's specialty in being a sort of magical utility kind of wizard, but they're also an all-rounder. They're capable of taking lots mm-hmm. of different roles. They kind of can shift and do things. Tassadar is more than capable and willing to pilot a ship mm-hmm. um, and to back up Thalia if need be. What um what ships would they be piloting? Because I guess these like, would be like the... generic Valkyrian starfighters. Basically. Are they comparative to the uh, Twin Star? Are they no. like better this? Or this is like on? this Twin is Star quite best. literally, yeah. quite literally. Return of the Jedi, you've got the Millennium Falcon, okay. <laughs> and then a bunch of X-Wings. Yeah, okay, That is okay. what we're talking They're about. Now, keep X-wings. in mind that Wedge Antilles was in one of those X-Wings, and he's the best starfighter in the galaxy, <laughs> so he's fine. Okay. Well, Don't yeah. diminish the X-Wing. In terms of... When my, he's piloted by Wedge ship. Antilles. It's my position ship. on... Uh, on uh, what was it? The, the Prong 3, the Thalia Prong? What did you call that? The Starfighter? Uh, the Starfighter Twin Star Squadron. The Starfighter Twin Star Squadron. I'm not going to be on the Twin Star. I'm going to be on the Battle Star. Uh, I'll be salt high. Okay, so <laughs> where, where does Quill want to be? On the Astoria or on the Storm Chaser? Uh, on, probably on the Astoria, because I want to be a, a distant Thalia uh, R2-D2. Right. Except I'm Q-K... Now, K-L. Okay. question for this. <laughs> Why do you want to... So you don't have to be on the Astoria to do that. The Astoria, yeah. to keep in mind, the Astoria is being withheld along with the Tastar and some of the more powerful ships because they are afraid Until that this Fenrir is going to be able to right, destroy okay. them quite easily. So if you are on the Astoria, you would not really be with, able to assist Thalia that much until the Astoria is present. Okay, fair enough. But if you're on the Storm Chaser, you can still do all of that. You can still be Thalia's guy in the chair, but you would need to be on the Storm Chaser. Okay, yeah. You can still do that. I just don't want to be on the Twin Star, you know? That's a suicide mission. (laughs) Oh, my God! (laughs) (laughs) That's my girlfriend you're talking about. You could be on the Storm Chaser. I mean, you're acting like the Storm Chaser isn't also a suicide mission. I know. But I'm going to be below decks. Oh, I see. (laughs) And that's where you're going to be safe when the whole thing blows up. (laughs) All the... Everything blows up apart from the little bug. (laughs) Just a stash of crumble that he's just shoving in his little bird face. Uh, Yeah, Um, I'm going to block up all the doors for crumble. (laughs) You could either be on Storm Chaser or infiltration, I guess. Um, I I just want to be in that squadron I, not split across two missions, I guess, is, is the way I'm thinking about it. Yeah, focused on focused Twin on one, Star. <coughs> but not on the Twin Star. Keep, keep in mind, the other thing I'll mention is there is Thalia and the, the Starfighter Squadron, they won't be able to do any. They're going to be assisting the Storm Chaser until these barriers are yeah, taking okay. down. So at least for the first half, you probably won't need to assist Thalia that much. Um, but once the barriers are down, that is perhaps more when, if you wanted to assist Thalia, you would have to devote yourself to that task. But okay. you could certainly help the Storm Chaser for that initial section. Yeah, okay, um, yeah, that works. Because I still need to wait for the infiltration to get like all exactly. the information. Yeah. How f- okay. far could... Do you have the range to help 
from um, the Storm Chaser to the big boy Fenrir. So uh, have... to help the infiltration team. No, to help oh. Thalia because yes. she's going to be. We're going to kind of abstract a couple of things. Okay. So like, like the idea I had for Quill is that he might be able to like basically kind of set up like a special arcane eye, like you know set it into the twin star system or something okay, and he's no, gonna has... be like you to, to not to keep making star wars references you are the targeting computer you are gonna be <laughs> yeah. the like the thalia turn off the targeting computer use the quill and it's like the, no, 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 like i've got it and you're gonna be doing that I'm just gonna be, I'll be it's jarvis. like a remotely kind of like jarvis hacking yeah. into the system kind of thing three, we're, three gonna three kind of, we're gonna abstract a bunch of stuff here we're also gonna be abstracting rounds and time a little bit um you know we're gonna do if there is it's like a combat round. It won't be the traditional kind of six seconds combat round. It might be like several minutes, but you're just going to take one turn kind of thing. We're just going to abstract a couple of little bits. Abstracting okay. time yes. itself? Oh. That is my power. God, this is um, madness. Ow. I know. Um, to clarify, so it sounds like you've got everything pretty locked down. The only question I have is if Nova is going over in the infiltration team yeah. on the Storm Chaser, who amongst the crew or the player characters would you have stationed in the engine room? Because you do need to have an engineer. Yeah, Sounds like Quill will be around as a navigator at least for some of it. Once Quill devotes himself to Thalia, though, you will also need somebody to take over navigation. Maybe Danica or One of the Storm Chaser crew? Um, I would say out Howard? of the Storm Chaser crew, Howard is currently has no set role. Penny is currently on the main gun. Um, Howard doesn't have a role. Howard is capable. He is not going to be the best, but he is capable of at least doing it. Would Protector be better? I think Protect. I'd rather Protector be up the fight Protect people. Yeah. Protector and Max and Danica are. They're fighting. Uh, they, they are very much specialised in certain roles. Maybe Penny so. would be better. Possibly. Um, her Would she and be Howard are. Howard? About the same? About okay. the same. Basically, maybe, you don't maybe. have any other specialists mm. beyond Nova for the engine room. So Hi anybody yeah. is going to basically be the same, unless one of you. The only per other person I'd say is I think Quill, do you have a decent Arcana or Lucius? Uh, if you have yeah, a decent I mean, Arcana? Yeah. 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 Anybody You're with a decent Arcana a check is probably going to be good yeah, at doing it. Mine's yeah. plus nine. For six. Yeah, so that? Lucius actually would be probably would know more, like, and that's going to be your innate magic wheel. and stuff. Yeah, well, if, it Oof. depends. Like, if you have a Raya piloting, maybe you can jump down. Is the Raya on us? I, yeah, that's my um, understanding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, better than this. So, uh, I mean, for the it's first now hour. it's Thalia and Tassadar then. With backup, with, from back Quill. with backup from Quill. With backup from Quill. Mm -hmm. And there'll um, probably be a couple of, I will probably say that at least two unnamed Valkyrian pilots will be flying with them as well. Nice. Um, and, we, and if you'd like to come up with a cool squadron name, such as Gold or Red or something like that, <laughs> that would be great. Green. Uh, green. Green. Green squadron. There you go. Uh, so I guess we'll Twin Star, Valley will be green, green one. By. Uh, green. green leader. Green leader and then green one, two, and three. Okay. Um, <laughs> Nice. She was Super green standing by. Green. <laughs> Big green standing by. Mean green giant standing by. Mean green. Green giant. Giant. <laughs> mean green green giant. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So green grocer. <laughs> green, 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 green grocer standing by. <laughs> it's great that we're laughing about this now because she's absolutely dying. No, uh, no, no, no. She's got. Yeah. The arcane eye is back up. Green point, standing by. That was a well, I, it's, we're we gonna, have... we, Tom, we're going to count it as like special magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is DM magic. So, if there's point. special DM magic, yes. so Nova has an ability with the echo that she can transfer consciousness to the echo. Yeah. And the distance can be up to 1,000 feet. Yeah. I'm feel, so, could, could no, if Nova's safe, like, and off the ship, could she? do that although we I to would get it say on. you could leave the echo in the engine pod mm. the special sarcophagus the tomb the engine tomb uh, you can leave the echo in there and yes I would allow you to transfer your consciousness to make checks but that means that in your infiltration mission Nova is completely vulnerable and unable to act no I mean to Thalia to the twin star like when it gets I would say that, not the not twin star yeah. because right. the pod would basically keep the echoes form in place because normally you can only have 15 feet you can only go a certain range right so you summon it, it up to 30 feet no yeah. up to 15 feet it can move up to 30 when we're both yeah thinking and then I can transfer my consciousness and it goes up and to you can a thousand. move up to a thousand so but. I think but I think because of those periods where you're not controlling the echo 
the distance would be too great, the twin starts moving around, yeah. whereas the pod kind of locks the echo in place, yeah. um, is what I would say. Yeah, so, that. I mean, if I did that, it would leave me deaf and blind, so... Yeah, and it means <laughs> you would not be able to act yeah. Please infiltration. No. I don't think that's going to be good right. for I'm just wondering if we have enough people on the infiltration team. I think we do. Five. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. Is that enough? That's a party. I will happily like... say that that is certainly no more or less than what I was expecting. Yeah. Okay. That's a party. Um, mm. Keep in mind, you don't want to have it too big because the more people you have, the bigger the chance yeah. of like being yeah. noticed and stuff like that. Do you have a reasonable way out? No. I have a <laughs> dimension door and an arcane gate. Arcane gate is up to 500. So this raises an interesting point. Uh, this is something that something Rain and Callus and that would probably bring up. The Storm Chaser, to actually get in the feet. Fenrir, the Storm Chaser will need to fly close enough to find a point in the Fenrir ship that you can basically teleport over to, which means somewhere that you can see. So it means finding like an open hangar bay or something like that. Arcane Gate, I believe, is your only spell that you can take multiple people with. Dimension Door, you can only take one person. Yeah. So I was going to ask Will yeah. if he would like to lend me the spell wave. storing ring. Wayfinder's oh yeah, guide. I was going to say Wayfinder's Guide. I've not taken that in with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. just, well, I was thinking if I, yeah, I could maybe prepare a teleportation circle. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, what level is it? Fifth. Yeah, I can put it on the ring, give you the ring, you attune to the ring. Mm -hmm. And then I presume there's teleportation circles like on you, this ship. The Astoria, the Tassadar both have teleportation circles. So that could be a thing. It, it takes a minute to cast though. Yeah, that's so, quite a long time. No, it's not escape. an instant escape. Yeah. The alarms go off. Um, I would happily tell you that both Tassadar and Azaria being powerful mages, Azaria can basically, with time, she can't do this in combat, but as a ritual, she can almost cast almost any wizard spell. So she could put another arcane gate in there. Okay. Uh, if, is arcane gate fifth or sixth level? You check Sick. for me. Ah, then it can't. Yeah. <laughs> then she can't. It's only if, up I, to five. if I take a minute to cast a spell on the ring, does it? Do you then still have yeah. to spend a minute to? Oh, damn. Okay. You are using. You are casting the spell out of the ring. Effectively. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but not material components and stuff. The like other that. option is uh, you can try a manual escape, which is you get to a point on the Fenrir and you jump across to the Storm Chaser, which means you will have to survive astral space for at least a round. And also, but it is possible. We pilot the storm chaser to go pick them up. Scoop us up. This is the, the norm oh, of the NSF swooping wow. down. Jump open, open the like, butt yeah. and then go in the butt. Yeah, Did we get any kind of like space helmet type constructions? <laughs> <laughs> there is, uh, I mean... Like for emergencies. The wolf pack. The wolf pack have suits that basically they can, it allows them to temporarily, yes. Wouldn't the Valkyrie um, and Empire have space stuff? I would say they would, but you would have to ditch basically any armor you currently have. Well, I need to ditch mine already because mm -hmm. it's clanky. Yeah. So I mean, I when you say ditch, I'm not wearing have... armor. Duff. Yeah. Then in theory, yes. Um, we could take them would... as an emergency. Yeah, it would count as it would count as armor though for Ayla. So you would lose your unarmored. Um, actually, no. I think you get that up to a certain type of armor. It basically counts as leather armor. I mean, with these 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 space like suits, astral suits, these astral suits. I mean, just put it in the backpack, you know. Right? Yeah. Like, if we are if are in need of yeah. a. It does take. It takes time to put them on. It takes like two minutes to put them on. Mm. It's not. You can't put a spacesuit on in six seconds. Mm. Yeah, and one doesn't fit a unicorn. Yeah, is there probably. a unicorn shaped one? Yeah, it's yeah, not it's a unicorn not shaped, shaped one. one. Hmm. Uh, mm. I've left it behind once before. Is there any trees on the Fenrir and that Probably we can not. get hope to? There's oh, yeah. one in your hope room! Not. There's one in your room! We Probably could not. get hope to... Imagine room. that. The whole thing's a tree! <laughs> Just it's made of Idrisil. <laughs> Do we want to refill Lesser Restoration into my mm. spell storing ring as well? That's a good idea. Uh, let's all restore Yeah, I was going to say, basically you have about two hours mm -hmm. um, until you arrive at Ooh. the point you need to be. Mm -hmm. um, there is a couple of things that I was going to have uh, happen whilst uh, this, these two hours take place. So but they, this is also a chance for you to take a short rest if you'd like. Um, to do things like unattune or deattune to magic items. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, generally catch up with NPCs or talk to people or make plans. I had two questions on my front. Is mm -hmm. One, I definitely need to do something about my armor because my current armor is clanky. You can easily have so, a suit of studded leather armor. Yeah, provided uh, to would you. that be one of the Valkyrian suits? Like yeah, suits? that's leather armor. Leather it's armor? It's slightly less so, AC, but it basically has a built-in, I think it's called like an amulet of adaptability or something. Mm. Basically means that you can breathe in space. You do still take some cold damage. It gives you resistance, but you still take some cold damage. How many items are you attuned to right now? 
All of them, but I can take the. I have a ring of free action that I can take off. It's the least important. Because I got braces of defense. If you want them, they add plus two to AC. But only if you're not wearing. Armor, if you're not wearing a shield, I have a shield. Ah. Plus, you should you should probably keep that. Yeah, it would yeah. just be so. It's just a standard suit of leather armor for one of these Valkyrian astral suits, like uh, environment suits, basically. Is but it gives you the benefit of you can breathe. Um, it basically can provide you with breathable air, which isn't as big a deal for Nova. But and it gives you resistance to cold damage from astral so space. Only from astral space cold damage. Yeah. If it's like a frost breath or something like that, it doesn't. I will think upon this in a second. My second question was do are we gonna have a way to communicate with each other like messenger stones or like That's Valkyrian tech or you. something? Ooh, messenger um <laughs> That's what? another achievement. Moisture achievement. I can I can uh, Azaria can provide you with a spell telepathic bond. It lasts eight hours. Wow. That might have to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that might do it. Uh, you would be, it would basically be the five of you, Thalia? plus um, I think I can do up to eight. Let me check. I think she can do up to eight people. With I it. think Thalia would be a good shout because she's so crucial yep. to her bit. Yep. Would it count as free actions to talk to each other? Yes. Maybe Araya if we have a spare. Well, I'm wondering because Thalia was saying that she up wants to. Up to eight to... creatures of your uh, choice um, for the duration. Uh, and it just lasts until the spell ends. It's not concentration, but things like the spell magic would remove it. There is the potential sure. that if you go into an anti-magic field or you are the target of a spell magic, it might remove the effect. But just from that one person, not the entire... From that one person, yeah, yeah. yes. Um, um, you can communicate telepathically through the bond, whether or not you have a common language. The communication is possible over any distance, though it can't extend to other planes of existence. Thalia was saying that she uh, didn't want Kyrie on there no. because uh, she needs to concentrate. Would she then want to be part of this group chat? <laughs> yeah. Who? Kyrie. Well, no, she that's because she's worried, about, she's Kyrie, worried about Kyrie, not that she, okay. she was, doesn't yeah, want anything. Yeah. So Azaria can telepathic bond the five of you, uh, Thalia six, and then there's two more Araya? spaces. Araya. Yep. In case. Uh, yeah. Yep. Howard in engineering or no. Or you can just shout. You, you can, what about? Or you, or you could have Callus or yeah. Rain. Callus, because Rain, Rain will also be commanding the Astoria as well. Yeah, let's have. Actually, maybe let's instead. Maybe Rain. instead of Araya, we could have Rain and Callus, and then we've got everyone covering a, a good. Bases. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Callus will probably. It, you maybe suggest this to him, and he's like, "Unfortunately, I'm already going to be dealing with many other communications, but I can have one of the Lord Admirals uh, act on my behalf." He's gonna be dealing with like his fleet. Yeah. Like he's gonna be like basically he's gonna be in, like six group chats. <laughs> yes. yeah. I can't handle another one. But um, he will probably put you. He with, muted uh, us. Yeah. He, he will hell? probably suggest that you maybe even Valor. He would probably suggest oh, that you instead yeah, that, have Valor, yeah. who can then relay on his behalf. All right, Valor and um, Rain. Rain. Yeah. Do um does uh, Callus and the Astoria um. I mean, they don't want to go close because this thing will obliterate yeah. them. Mm -hmm. Could they, if things get dire, <laughs> and we're like, we need some kind of guns here, or so? Cal Callus, like when you're having this discussion, imagine this is all happening as one yeah, big yeah, meeting. Yeah. Loads of people are coming and going and going in. Callus will say, if things are looking dire, we will have no choice but to have the Astoria and the Tassadar and the uh, many other ships that we are trying to preserve engage in the battle. That is given. If there reaches a point where we feel that you are not able to complete this mission, we will move in and take our inactions. This will likely result in the destruction of at least one of our ships, the Astoria or the Tassadar, uh, our most powerful ships. They will basically have to take on the, the Fenrir itself if you are unable to do this. Sure. It will still enable you to, it will enable us to reach Entropis and perform the greater mission. This is unfortunately, one of the difficulties of war on this scale is that sometimes these consequences are unavoidable. We won't let that happen. I hope not. We will be successful in our mission. Right, team? Right, right team? Yes, yes, right. absolutely. Morale officer sentry says so. You... We will do it. There you go, now she says it. And you will not be alone. So we are <laughs> submitting at least half of the fleet will be accompanying with you to try and buy you as much time as possible you will be under the full weight of the forces out there. The Storm Chaser, being so close to the Fenrir, may be protected from its weapons, but keep in mind that there are creatures, aberrant abominations, Valkyrian corrupted ships, who knows what else, that will attack you in trying to defend the Fenrir. I hope that Hadar and the Fenrir will not anticipate this plan, as it is, quite honestly, rather drastic. Uh, it would seem foolish for any living creatures to attempt this, 
that is perhaps where we have a benefit and our underestimates what we are willing to do to win. They wouldn't be dumb enough to do that. <laughs> we are! <laughs> That's us. Hey. You will also have one other powerful ally on your side. And he kind of looks over and Siaska enters. <gasps> I will be doing what I can to fend off the most powerful, but keep in mind my power is diminished. I am not as strong as I once was. You're strong enough for us. I will do my best. I Even I could not take on the Fenrir completely alone, but I can at least keep some of the smaller vessels, uh, hopefully destroy a few if I can. Well, let's do Siaska proud. So before you go, uh, Kilik. Uh, yeah? If I can, a moment. Yes, yes, okay, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Siaska. She looks. My God. Your eye. Uh, yeah, we have uh, yeah. had much time to discuss what happened or to deal with the injury. Mm. Kind of wish it didn't happen, you know? I'm sorry that it did. I don't even understand how it happened. I asked a question and did she do it from the past, the future? It, it doesn't make any sense. From what I understand, Zarkira learned of the eye when she captured you. And a few other things, yeah. Then it is likely that she has been preparing for this moment. She's a very clever woman, and with access to more powerful magic than any other mage alive knows, this power of Hadar coursing through her, it is perhaps likely that she carved an echo of herself, stored it in the past or the future, ready for your question. I mean, she's got multiple versions of herself, it's not surprising. It may not be so easy for her to replicate it so quickly, but it is something Unfortunately, that was a gift given by Hesper, and it is not one I can replicate. Not anymore. But I can heal the eye. Okay. Um, I mean, if she's going to go through all that effort to tear out my eye, <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> it shows that she fears you. A painful compliment. I would have appreciated just a well done, or like a clap or something, but no, she tore out an eye. Sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> Callus will. She is not one to allow a threat to go unanswered. She laid that trap because she feared what you would learn about her. That means there is a weakness to be exploited. Even if you do not know it now, I'm sure you will figure it out in time. Siaska will just sort of say, come, come here. Okay. And, uh, and she's tall, like she's nearly, she's taller than Sentry, I think. She's like nearly nine, but she's massive. Um, maybe maybe as tall as Sentry, maybe not taller. Cause you're like eight feet yeah. in as Sentinel Prime. Um, and she's lithe, but like this kind of, the nebulous hair flowing around her, the flowing robes, it almost looks like she's always just ever so slightly hovering off the ground. Like she's tall and quite imposing, but there is, as soon as you get within, you know, close to her, there is this comforting, motherly like aura and you just feel your body kind of relax almost and like the pain of the eye the kind of dull throbbing whatever would have been there dissipates and she places her hand over the socket and you watch as starlight begins to coalesce around her hands and feel the space that was within the eye and you watch as an eye regenerates and reforms but it has <laughs> <laughs> but it is not quite an organic eye it has a kind of metallic star metal like consistency to it and it glows golden similar to how the storm eye would look when the 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 vision would take place have that kind of cloudy golden aura to it um, and it just leaves that in place kind of this softly shimmering replacement eye and it functions completely as an organic eye for you quill you suddenly feel your depth of field increase and like you can you know you see everything kind of merge back good i've walked into so many things <laughs> <laughs> deep perception yeah sorry played the congo deep, deep i lost my deep perception i mean i'll turn to the others how, how does it look does it look uh you have a star eye it's starry now siaska you made it starry it's more similar to like the like the cloudiness of the when you would use the storm. It's either. a cloudy, cloudy <laughs> ice. Yes, you made it cloudy. <laughs> right, describe it. Where are we right now? You're in the Tassadar. Yeah. Can we dim the lights, Tassadar? 
Just didn't you hear me. like you hear a, a sort of voice from around you because talking to Tastar. Tastar's not in the room, but there is. Tastar is the room. Yeah, you just hear this like I can. Just just for a moment. Tastar, dim the lights. The <laughs> canvas was like, and you do feel the lights kind of dim ever so slightly. Like, yeah, got it. There's like a golden glow to it. Very cool. It's right? not bright enough oh, to like really awesome. illuminate the room. It's kind of similar to the Matrix. It gives off like a soft, dull, golden glow. But it's not like I'm gonna. Like, it, you know, <laughs> if it was pitch black, you can just see one gold. It's you, really good at I, I think that there's like an element where you can control how brightly it glows. Close your eye, man. Close your eye. Yeah. You can basically Quilt like dim yeah. your eyes. <laughs> RGB mode. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Um, Is it water cold? Is it water? The lights kind of come Brain back is. up. Self built. <laughs> after a few moments. Pre built. Well, your wing is self built. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, I mean, I'm happy to have another design eye. <laughs> like, yeah, so true. many different stages of this campaign. What does this that's eye look why like? I'm saying that it looks quite like what you have. Right. Yeah. right. Can Wink. you imagine like all the people who've just ripped it that eye out of their plushies? Oh yeah, they're, like they're trying you to modify it. You can't even see it. Look, it's just a soft blue glow. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice. Just like in these wonderful. Uh, art yeah. parts. Now you've got to put that eye back on your plushies. Like yeah. illustration is still canonical. Yeah. Nice. Uh, cool. With that. Uh, like I said, you guys, if there is anything you would like to do or any kind of like last moment things Just or plans. Double check. Like, so how are we teleporting initially from the Storm Chaser to the Fenrir? That's a great question. I'd love to know the answer to that. Can, can Mummy Perel give us some help with that? I'm, wait, she can prepare something for you, but you got to tell, like, wh how what's that going to look like? Wait, what like, was this teleport from? Basically, she can give you a scroll of, like, to, yeah. something. She could probably make you a scroll. Uh, a scroll of Arcane Gate. Can sixth level is pretty tricky. Let me. Or... I would say yes. There's a chance it might. It, she's going to have to quick make this scroll, which means there is a chance that there would be unstable elements of it. So as I uh... five level one jumps. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like you want, like you want a physical, like jump a across space jump, a halo yeah, jump. Like, yeah, absolutely, you yeah. can do that. Absolutely. I would love to see how a unicorn manages this. Um, I can jump pretty. I'm very good at jumping. You see oh, she's jump. here. Yeah, no, no, I'm just in, like, I was going to say yeah, crates. Like, <laughs> in, uh, in the horse, horse, horse jumpies. I can jumpies. jump pretty high, right? Yeah. Pretty far. You are the spirit of jump. <laughs> yeah. But again, this is the storm chaser will need to basically yeah. make a piloting check to get you close enough. And then mm. make that jump across. What about the vision a... of us jumping? And then and arcane, gate, the you can, arcane gate Just you can use to basically get back. What about um, a teleportation screen? Uh A full full teleport, I believe, is sixth level. So again, it's going to have the same problems. With multiple gate. people as well. Tele teleport, yeah, yeah. teleport. You can. Eight, yeah. Well, wait, you can teleport. Mm. Us, it's a shame right? you don't have a helmet well, teleportation anymore. There's a teleport. Yeah, I died and it disintegrated. Thank you, Mark. Teleport circle is a lower level that it costs a minute to cast. Yes. But teleport I was circle thinking takes if a while. we did that on the way in. Uh, if you, you need could get you us. it would need to be stationary for a minute, the storm chaser. Oh. Also you need to know the Yes, yeah, you, you don't. You, your teleport circle can yeah. only go to certain places, and even with teleport, you'd be trying to teleport to a place that you've never been, never seen. Mm. There risk is a high risk. risk that you go yeah. flying off somewhere that you don't intend to. I, Arcane uh, Gate would be the safest way, but you need to be able to see where you're going. About, but that's possible. What about three dimension doors? Yeah. What about twenty misty steps? <laughs> uh, dimension door? Yeah. I mean, like Azari can make you a scroll of dimension door. Fast step. But like. Different, like we'd need one, two, three scrolls. Cause you also need people that can use scrolls. Yeah. Right now, only you and Hope can use those scrolls. I'm done. Hope's the only other spellcaster. <laughs> Hi. Scout and Norfear are not spellcasters. Uh, Scout could deploy a sort of zip line. They have an ability where they can sort of create like a, they've got like mm. a grapple gun. Cool. Awesome. So you could do, so basically the choice is if you want a magical way to get over there easily, you have an arcane gate with Nova, but it's only one. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I'd rather use that to get, get back. Yeah. Which means that then you have two choices, I'm gonna say. Azaria can make you a scroll, but there is going to, it's gonna be an unstable scroll because she's having to make a sixth level spell very rapidly, which means that there is, cons there might be a chance that something goes wrong. Spicy. The other option is you try a Manual. We are going to literally jump across and try and get into like an open airlock thing and 
basically break our way in from the outside. I, I think that what I would say is like the Fenrir has these like arcane barrier shields, which are there to deflect like enemy ships and like uh, laser blasts and magical spells and things like that. Five small media, like five creatures Teeny could pass like, through yeah, that yeah. barrier, but you would then be on the outside of the ship. Um, okay, you'd have to make that choice. I'm feeling spicy consequences with teleport. Okay. Oh, she made it, it's awesome down to you and Ayla at this point because Wait, I think the NPCs will just do what you tell them to. Uh, teleport or, or arcane whichever game. one, yeah. Um, yeah. Ma ma magical spicy consequences over physical halo I drop. Like How do Although we not we... have mm. another one way to get across? I mean, you do. I did, you but jump. I disintegrated. No, no, no. Scout will but make a little... I feel like <laughs> all of our allies, <laughs> we must have... I, I can just there... see Nova jumping across and then just... Oh, it's yes. just like how long it takes us to get well, in when we flying. get across, you know? Yeah. Flying, flying would allow you to move through uh, astral space, yeah? If you have a fly speed. I do um, have a fly spell. Like, protection, I'm just wondering if we can, yeah, instead but of we would be, yeah, doing we teleports... Yeah, we take damage the whole time yeah. we go. Well, that's if we protect well. from that damage, like, is there protection from elements? Yeah, it certainly helps reduce it. Um, reduces it significantly. If you have, like, basically, if you have cold resistance, um, it helps massively. I can do protection from energy. Is that what I'm so, thinking of? Yeah. Resist, resist it gives you resistance acid, to an cold, element. Fire, lightning, or thunder, so I can give everybody cold resistance. Is that to one person, or is that to a group? Uh, I think if you cast it at a high level, you can. Yeah, you can do more people. people. So, so I think you'd have to do it at fifth level, and that would be three people. Uh, I want to see a space jump. We use pay, yeah. We if we did that, and maybe used um, pass wall. What, just break through one of the walls. Pass wall would so like as if you can get to the physical hull, yeah. you could pass wall your way in. Absolutely. Go underneath it. Pass wall. Ascend through the floor. Like in climb the... up. Do a little swimming animation. <laughs> Press the button to go up. And only goes through the one, one with the spit yeah. out the other side. <laughs> the dream. And just build a weird contraption. Um. Uh, yeah. I think. I think protection from cold. For the duration of the jump would be because it was what I mean I don't know if it would be the same it but it was like twenty five damage so I can't I can only do one hope person. hope can cast it on two people okay, okay. So we could do three so we could do that and then I could do fly but only if I had maybe two of us. could one Lucius one? do fly on every I can do fly oh in terms of uh, so third level and then plus one person for every level above that lesser restoration by the way I can't put it into the ring because I don't have it prepared. Yeah, I figured. I've kept it crossed out. I still got bacon though. Yeah, cool. still got the bakes. All right. Um, maybe just chuck in some level one jumps into your. It's like a fail safe, you know. Worst case scenario, you cast jump on people that are falling short. They will be mid air. Yes, you would have to cast jump on before yeah. they make the jump. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, that can be your parachute. You do the jump with jump, and then. You fly the rest of the way. Being a first level spell, I think that I could certainly have. Um, you could definitely have something like a potion of jump or something. So we have protect from elements. We jump. Well, I believe currently only three of you can be protection from elements. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll wear the suit, like the. Okay. The star suit. You don't need it. You got three hundred hit points. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so we jump. We. F Fly, no, we jump and fly, or just jump and splat, and then pass wall. Fly would be useful because if we certainly, <laughs> certainly would help. Jump, fly, pass wall. Do you have pass wall? Who no. has pass wall? No one. Azaria. Ah, oh, fuck. Azaria, do you know the spell Tensor's floating disc? Yes. <laughs> Everyone gets a floating disc. Well, it's I, can create, I can only create one. It is concentration. Wait, it can't be a, a disc that what moves, does it? Yeah. Or is it no, it, it uh, follows behind someone. And I don't believe you can just mentally control it. Pretty Mage rad. Hand. Yeah, there's a lot of like weird spells. You just throw in all your just spell slots out. Like. Going up to five hundred pounds. Passwall is a fifth level spell. I'm sorry, I can make you a scroll of passwall. I also, um, I don't know where I should allocate this. I have a death ward scroll uh, that. Uh, first time a target would drop to zero as a result of taking damage, they drop to one instead. So it's basically just a stay alive. I don't know thing. that I can cast that, but Hope probably could. Um, because that's the thing is like I'm also a warlock, so it has to. Yeah, how much healing do we have actually with us? Hope. 
I yep. can give you. How much healing does help? What the uh, she has an ability <laughs> called Healing Light that she can use three times a day that heals 3d8 plus 5 HP and will give you a temporary boost to your AC and saving throws. She also has a once per day heal spell. Does she have slabs? Nope. Oh. Have you got potions? She stopped dealing slabs. Have you she got one? Dealing slabs. That's right. Slabs. There. Um, one. Do you want a Cure Wounds scroll? Second level, Cure Wounds? Hope can use it. I don't know if I can use it, but Hope, can. Use Hope could use it. I have five. Oh wow! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Just using them as toilet paper. Oh my! <laughs> oh, I don't say anything. So it's, 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 I've, 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 I've been doing bigger heals out without this. The cure wound second level is garbage. I have two potions. Two d eight. Two d eight plus you know. But it helps in a pinch. Do you want to give me one so that in case you Wait, go down, I can shove it in your face? Whoever uses the scroll, they modify. Because uh, I have none. But for hope, that's still plus five. I can't remember why okay. I got this. Thank you. I'm pr- purely trying to make sure that we both have a way of going. You. Yep. Okay, so now I have this one, and you have a greater. Okay. I've got a supreme, but I feel like we're going to be fighting. Yeah, you. Point yeah. Of yeah. Storm chases. You keep it. I'm just making sure we divvy up what's between us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got hope. She's a unicorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, she does. I know. Yeah, she but has, they've she got has three and those Billy um, Boy healing master. Her 700 HP. Hope, yeah. Hope's oh, wait, healing light ability no. affects two people when have, she uses yeah. it, so she can actually heal two people each time she uses it. Cool. cool. And it's 3d8 plus 5, and it gives you a temporary boost. And she, like I said, she has a once per day um, heal spell. She can also cast Greater Restoration once per day, and she has a bunch of other more utility-based spells oh, that she can use damn. as well. She so... is not a damage dealer. She mm-hmm. is low Pure low support. AC. Um, low. She's low AC, decent hit points, because she is pretty tough, um, but she's mainly utility and, and support focused. Nice. Can she do Pass Without Trace? Uh, she can cast Pass Without Trace, yes. yes. That would yeah. be useful. That's, yeah. why yeah. That's why we wanted her. Uh, yep, and I can tell you, uh, Norfear and Scout are both specialists. Uh, Norfear is high AC, low HP, high damage, um, with high lots of skills. Okay. Yeah, she's because she's agile. She's very dexterous. Oh, okay. Um, she has lots of skills. She is very good at infiltration, is her thing. She's an assassin. Um, she can do a lot of damage if an enemy is sort of like incapacitated or distracted or if is or is unaware of her. So if she's hidden, she gets a damage boost. Um, and then she also uh, has like things like cunning action and evasion and stuff like that. She's very roguey. Um, Scout is less a damage dealer. He's not like a rogue, um, but he's very good at moving around difficult terrain. So overcoming things like hazards. He has a climb speed. He can literally like walk on like vertical and, and horizontal surfaces. Like he can walk on walls and stuff like that. Um, he's also compact frame, so he's small. He can squeeze through small gaps. Um, and he has a special ability called Scout's Toolkit, which he can basically create like common items like he can't make magic items but he could be like i need a grapple gun and he makes like a zip line or he can make like a ladder or he can do things like that he can like create like uh, mundane solutions Mm. um he also has the driven to purpose guardian ability so he can basically add a d6 to a fail check um i i think for this i wanted to basically give you guys the stat blocks and have you guys run these npcs i think i'm going to change it because I, the way I'm going to do it, and I didn't have time to print them all out, I'm going to play them. But if you guys have something you specifically want them to do, tell them. Otherwise, I'll just play them as best as I know the yeah. NPCs. Yeah, that, cool. that makes sense. Okay. And I think I know how I'm going to handle the split mission thing. We're nice. basically going to do split one mission. round on one mission, then immediately we're yeah. going to do another round with the the because it's going to be very simultaneous. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. We've like done it. that before. It was cool. Yeah. So we jump, we fly, we pass wall. I feel like that's the thing, right? That's what uh, we're doing. Jump, and, and fly, we pass. How many? Some how many can you cast fly on? on? Um, depends on the level I do yeah. it at. So there's five in our team. What do we want to spaff on you guys? There's five in the team. Five. Mm-hmm. So at third level I can do me. Fourth level I can do me two. and one other. Fifth level I can do me two, and two four, others. Fourth. Oh, so you have to do enough for six people. So I right? can do yourself. fly. Five. It needs to be a seventh level spell to get five people. I can do fly on me. It's a third level for me, so that's just me, isn't it? <gasps> yes. So North Fear and Scout are pretty like good at like things like and like Ayla's good at jumping. I can, like I have a if yeah. the if the storm chaser can get close enough, it we won't be it. that difficult. We don't need it. I have I mean, an emergency you'll need to make it, you'll need something to but, jump, but yeah, yeah, but not to fly. Yeah. You don't need to fly. Yeah. Flying will just mean that there's no check. You just yeah. are like. Psh, I have uh, if nice. it goes bad for me, I have my hammer. I can use a charge to fly, mm-hmm. but I will try a jump first. So yeah. jump and pass wall. I think we'll get us in mm-hmm. maybe. Yep. Okay. Oh, cool. All right. Sounds good. I retract my fly. And what protection about from energy? Storm. Yes. Hope yeah. and Sentry will cast and that. Yeah. Uh, I've but taken... there's only three people, yeah. so I think like Ayla and Nova are probably going to be the ones that don't get that. Yeah. Hope would cast it on Norfear and Scout, 
and then it's up to Sentry who she casts it on. Cool. So I've taken off my adamantine armor and I've put on leather armor. Just standard leather armor. Yeah. Standard leather armor. We'll just so count the like astral bit of and like. And I've got astral you know, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cool. You'll take basically you'll take half damage from the cold. Basically, you get counts as cold resistance. Um, all right. What about storm chaser? Is there anything? Any changes you guys want to make? Howard's going to be positioned down in engineering. Nice. Uh, yeah. Or do you want Howard on a gun? <clears throat> I think. Um, Where you want peeps? Howard being there. I think for the majority of the time, I think I could sit there for a, for a while, um, for the first half until I'm required elsewhere. You'll need, be needed as a navigator as well, don't forget. Oh, that's, yeah, okay, I'll get a navigator. Remember, on the, on the Storm Chaser, you have the pilot, the navigator, the engineer. Those are like three mandatory Pariah, positions. Howard me. Um, then you have two weapons. You have the main cannon and you have your rotary arcane Penny. cannon. Penny. Um, so Penny on one, you've yeah. got another one spare. Howard. Um, uh, you basically, Howard. Kamara can go on like a gun or something like that if need be as mm. well. You also only have three Wolfpack members on the deck. Okay. Um, you can draw them from elsewhere, but that means you have less uh, right. bonuses on other checks. Okay. So it means that you have like three random Wolfpack members who are free to do stuff. I guess if Kamara starts in that gun, because she can come back on deck. On the rotary gun. If, if she's... Is she fully recovered or? Yeah, yep. Okay. She can, yeah, with Grey Lano, because you currently have Grey Lano as your medic. Yep. Uh, basically, an NPC who's like downed, but you save, they are they are basically healed to full. Okay. Uh, they do have a slight penalty to things because they're injured, but they are. I think Dana could be great off a weapon. Yes. Yep. Just yep. ready to blast. Yep. Raya, pilot. We got Max. Yeah. Would you like to know like roughly what Danica and Max and Protector can do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Danica is she is basically a blaster. Cool. Um, her whole thing is that she has uh, fiery magical attacks. So she has a fiery blast which hits one target, does a ton of damage and can set them on fire. Um, she has <laughs> fireball. She can cast fireball at a heightened level mm -hmm. um, that does AOE damage and is a, basically a, is a standard fireball, but yeah. it's like 10d6. Yeah. Um, she can protect herself with a, a flame shield, which means that it's, it's like the shield spell, so she can increase her AC and stuff. Mm -hmm. She also has a, like a more sort of creative flavor ability, uh, which is that she can basically like conjure flame. So she can do things like uh, just create waves of heat to like melt something or to like you know you know uh, do something like that. Um, yeah, okay. It's more of a creative ability. She can generate huge amounts of fire and heat from her body, but the, every time Sick. she does it, she gets more exhausted. Might be a good repair thing. That, that is definitely. certainly a use that you can do. Human welding torch. Yeah, yeah. basically, yes. That is like a way that she could do it. Or like if you were like, we need to cut a hole in the Fenrir to get these guys out because mm. they can't use magic, she could in theory like melt a hole in, in the side of it or something. Um, Max We've... is a protector. He's a tank. Um, he basically provides half cover to anybody near him. So if anybody's near him and has a lower AC than 19, you basically get cover from him. Um, he also can enable, uh, three times a day, he can choose a creature to be his ward. Uh, a warded creature, basically, he can make attacks target him instead, as long as they're within range of each other. Okay. Um, so he can basically choose somebody and be like, I am protecting this person, and any attacks against them, he can take. Mm -hmm. um, Protector is very similar, but slightly different. Um, Protector is another similar tank. Um, does the same thing, provides cover uh, to anybody that's around them. Um, they have an ability where when they attack with their Guardian Blade, they can mark a creature. That creature then has disadvantage on any attacks other than Protector. Uh, so it basically like, yeah, draws okay. their attacks onto them. Um, and then they have a reaction uh, where they can move to somebody and basically force an attack to be re-rolled. They can basically like shoulder slam into somebody and like make them re-roll their attack against okay. the target or something like that. That's cool. Has to be within a certain range. But they're, they're both both basically the same. They're both very tanky um, yeah. protector types. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, well, I guess, yeah, Kamara maybe on the guns to begin with, uh, the, the rotary gun, mm -hmm. Penny on the main gun, mm -hmm. uh, Araya on the uh, piloting the storm chaser. I guess Howard in engineering? Yeah, just he, in case. Yeah, just in case. I feel like if something goes horribly wrong, we can probably jump down or other people can jump down to assist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm navigating. Nice. And then everyone else. Yeah. And Lucius has Last his captain one. ability. He can basically, as a, he can give somebody advantage to their role uh, if he's near them. So if he's like up near Araya and you, he can give either you or Araya advantage. Once per turn? Uh, basically, yeah, once per turn. It's, it's like a bonus action. Is give it, it once a per bonus, turn. Action, yeah. bonus action, not a reaction? No. You'd have to do it, but on your turn, you say, I'm going to help, blah, 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 and give them. Every time I do it, it's just Basically a salute, and that salute is like a big morale boost <laughs> yeah. for anyone. Yeah. 
It makes me feel so It's like the good. help action, but as a bonus action instead. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And uh, team uh, green squad. Mm-hmm. Team sneak. Is uh, no green squad. Green oh, yes. squadron. Uh, Thalia, assisted by Tassadar. And, and you. Moves. Can I? Have, what's the range on Elder Quill? Can it? It, it disappears after a certain point, right? Okay. Has I'll just have um, an arcane eye there then. And yeah, and like it's kind of like a not like an actual arcane eye. It's like you kind of hack into the system and connect oh, them to the storm chase. I want a stuff. tiny little Cortana like hologram. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> that's how I'm imagining it in my head. In. Honestly, I'm imagining in my head like there is this floating orb mm. sat next to Thalia. I, know, I, I meant like it's Elder Quill. Oh, like <laughs> a, a little, tiny little like, hologram. <laughs> Chief. Um, you need to go over there, Chief. <laughs> There's two of us in here, remember? That was level one. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Christ. Okay. <laughs> um, and also Tassadar. Uh, Tassadar? Yeah, Tassadar, yeah, Tassadar. Uh, in his own little ship. Their own little ship. And, and then some Valkyrian Some Valkyrian idiots. vessels, yeah. I think Tassadar does, you, you could say he for Tassadar. He does generally appear in a masculine kind of mm, form. Yeah. So, for Tassadar. Sick. Um, all right. It works, yeah. Okay. In that case, the operation begins. Um, Any RP stuff? Can I have a little quiet word with my girlfriend? Yeah. You find uh, you would have to kind of temporarily shuttle over to the Astoria, um, where Thalia is refueling the Twin Star and also basically clearing out. It looks like she's got a few of the um, uh, Crystal Maidens of Elena, and they're basically taking out a lot of, like, things from the Twin Star, like personal effects or, like, oh, any weight and, like, things like the snacks and stuff like that as well. But it's almost like... I think Nova would quickly realise she's trying to make it so that the Twin Star is as light as possible. Mm. Um, make sure that it doesn't have any uneven weight and, and balance and things like that. Um, and she's in the process of, like, you know, fixing it up and refueling it. And I kind of see you kind of coming and just kind of smile and sort of, like, lean back up against it. Don't it don't make this awkward. My Nerd. very nature is awkward. Yeah, I know that. That's why I'm warning you now. Okay. I'm trying not to be awkward. This is me trying not to be awkward. Purple. Thalia will kind of just lean down, kind of hug, like take you into like an embrace and kind of hold you close. Listen. We had this talk before all of this. One year. Yeah, I know that. But we both know what kind of mission this is. We both know what's at stake here. I'm the only one that can do this. I know. That's why I put you up for it. I'm glad that I've got some backup. Uh, that Eterna's a bit weird, but I'm glad that there'll be somebody there that at least knows who you are. Not just some random nobodies, but... And Quill said that he'd try and help me as best as he can. I will if I can. You've got your own mission to focus on. Without you, I can't do a damn thing. You've got to do this, Nova. But once I've done it, if I can join you in any way... No, you get out. They need you on the Storm Chaser. Remember, this isn't done. If we take down this ship, that's just one part of all this. And she'll point out to Entropis, or like in the direction of, of the Red Star, there's still one more thing you've got to do. That's nothing to do with me. If it comes to it, you get out, you get back to that ship, you kick that stupid red glowy bastard's face in. Hey, if um, worst comes to the worst, how many years do I have to mourn? <laughs> You're, uh, listen, if anyone's dying, I'm going to die first. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I owe you one anyway. You've already died once. You know you need to come back, right? I I did a lot to get your listen, record expunged. I'm not, listen, I'm not going to throw away my life carelessly. I just know what can happen. But I'm going to try to. I don't want to die. This I'm not seeing this as a suicide mission. I'm gonna live if I can. I just know what might come. But uh, you decide how long you need to mourn, if that's what you want to do. You know, it's gonna be the rest of my short mortal life. So weird. Gross. What's that like? Twenty years? Ten? I think so. Yeah. Ugh. She'll just like lean down, sort of like look into your eyes, give you a kiss. We've got this. I'm scared, but I will do my very best by you. Same. See you on the other side? See you on the other side? She'll just climb back up, go into the steps, look down at you one last time, 
wink, and then I'll just wait and watch it take off. Yeah, yeah you pull to the side. Uh, you watch as the twin star lifts off. You just glance up and from sort of like one of the gantries looking down, uh, you see Kyrie just sort of scrunched up, peering down, big cat next to her. I know. I know, guys. Yep. Meanwhile, Sentry, you are approached by Kamara. I um, I didn't get to say thanks for what you did. Oh no, that's it's fine. Don't don't worry. It was um, kind of weird. Uh, it was part of me that uh, I've never really felt at peace before. Mm. But I heard you. I had your voice, and I saw this golden river. Felt like I should come back. Like I said, we still need you. The wolf pack still need you. Yeah, yeah. We need to uh, try and make sure a few more of them make it out of this than, uh, than the others. Of course, yeah, we will. It's a shame you couldn't help the kid. Yeah, I know. It's only going to get harder. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, wanted to say thanks while I could. You've been a great asset to the team. <sighs> Please. We're not, uh, we're not like you and, and the others, but uh, we'll do what we can. Well, it makes it more special. The fact that you're, you know, still here with us, still fighting with us. You know, we have these gifts and, you know, I understand that we are stronger, but... That makes you all stronger than we are. Stronger than we could ever be. I think it's more... It's either we come out here and die fighting, or we, what, kick back on a Rois for a few years and hope that you are able to do what you need to do. I'd rather at least be here fighting and dying and making sure that you do it, rather than just, God, sitting there and waiting and kill me. Like, worse. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. I'd rather be here doing this. Then we'll do our best to see it through, together. Thanks, Andrew. She's just sort of like, poor, like hand. She doesn't have a paw, she has a hand. But she like, pats you on the shoulder. Just sort of like, nods, little ears twitch. And she's just sort of like, very gruff. Like, she's, Kamara's not an emotional person, but kind of like, meh, like kind of nods and grunts and then goes back to what she was doing before. Goes back to work, but did want to approach and say thank you for, for what you did. Knowing that it was not a, uh, it was, you know, that there is a cost to it and things like that. Can I um, see Grey Lana really quickly as well? Yeah, you go down, you find her uh, attending just to a couple more, like, minor injuries and things like that. Um, I think by this point, after a few hours, uh, it is likely that Lancian's body has been fully covered up. Like, Lucius, you know, kind of wanted to wait for a moment, but Grey Lana is kind of, like, in the process of finding some way to like maybe like preparing like a uh, gentle repose spell or something to keep him preserved but like you know it's not like they've got anywhere to put him so yeah. she's kind of tending to that um, and just kind of see oh sentry hello hi how, how are you holding up are you okay <sighs> i've been kept busy uh that's the thing with battles is i mean even when we're not in a fight people are getting injured here and there but um i'm trying to keep myself busy uh, tending to this one and she just sort of like looks towards Lansin's body. I am a little uh, concerned. Uh, I'm good at medical care and physical aid, but um, Howard's taking things mm. tough. Yeah, he's a, he's a gentle soul. Yeah. He, he was close to Lansin. I think that uh, saw him as a bit of a foster son. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'm... I've seen it all, <laughs> believe yeah. me, on, on the fleets, on the rowers and, and in the clinics that I used to work. I mean, I've dealt with some, some pretty nasty stuff, so uh, it doesn't get any easier, but I'm used to it. So mm. It doesn't uh, affect me in the same way. But thank you for checking. How, how are you? How, how, is, uh, how are the champions? Okay, I think, um, yeah, it's just a lot. A lot to plan, a lot to do, but we'll get through it. I think... I think the crew, I know that the captain and Quill and, and Nova and the others all have their roles here on the ship, but I think having your presence on the deck during these fights 
really matters. Oh, well, thank you. I'll do what I can to keep this ship safe for what's coming next. We've got something quite big, I think, Be fine. on the horizon. Yeah. But I will do my damn best to make sure none of that gets down to you guys. We appreciate it. Just but let me know if you need anything. I'm always here to help. Fine for supplies and, and everything, so just doing what I can. Uh, it's just a, a case of triage. You deal with the worst things first and everything else comes later. You helped train me, so... Well, hopefully it comes in help. Hopefully. Yeah. She'll just sort of like nod and sort of smile. Kind of a little tusk poking out, but yeah, just... Uh, yeah, again, kind of like Kamara. She's older, like, Grelano and Kamara are older than a lot of the other crew, and they've got that kind of weight of years yeah. behind them. Like, just, yeah, you kind of get the sense that, like, this is definitely maybe not as uh, bombastic as where you are now, flying around in astral space, fighting gods and monsters, but Grelano's definitely dealt with some some tough times. Yeah. Nice. Um, Alright. I guess I'll check in with Howard as well. Let's do the rounds, see how everybody's yeah. going up. Yeah. Uh, you probably find Howard on the top deck, just looking out at Astral Space. You see he's just playing with his wedding ring. And actually, no, he's not playing with his wedding ring. He has uh, Lancian's banner. Hi, Howard. Oh, oh, hello, hello, Sentry. And he just sort of gets a handkerchief out. He's like, oh, so, oh, I think I've got like space allergies or something. Ugh. No, it's okay. You don't have to hide, Howard. It's it's fine. Oh, no, 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 not how, not hiding at all. No, no, just um, you know, it's. Sometimes a bit easier for others, isn't it? When you when you make it when you say it's like allergies or something, mm. people people sometimes get a bit awkward around people when they're crying or when they're upset. But uh, no, we we're just uh, reminiscing. Yeah, Lancia was a good kid, brave kid. Are you okay? No. No, I give him a big hug. <laughs> It'll be okay, Howard. Yeah, he just uh, you know, little form. Leaky eyes, guys. Remember, leaky eyes. It's not actually, it's just the empathy of it. Uh, yeah, he just, like, leans into it. No, I'm worried. Uh, he leans into it and just lets out, like, lets it all out. Yeah. You know, just has been bottling a lot of it up. Yeah. And it just comes out. As soon as you ask that, like, are you okay, it just hits. And it's just a lot of loss in his life. A lot of loss. Not a warrior, not a soldier. And when you guys were off doing your adventures and things like that, the crew were like a family. And he's lost one. Feels like he's losing another. It's just hard. But takes the time, lets it out, and then just lets out a big sigh. We needed that. I'm always here help for you, Howard, if you need anything. I know. I know. Uh, same. Uh, I think that uh, the captain, I think because Miss Nova is not going to be here, uh, the captain's asked me to look after the engines, and I don't I don't really know what I'm doing, but she showed me a few things. But um, I've got the wolf pack down there, and they'll help me, but just do our bit, whatever we can. Exactly. Yeah. And we'll do our bit too. Yeah, I know. I know. But if, you, if you need anything, just shout. Oh, I'll come running. I know. Thank, thank you, Sentry. Thank you. You've, you've always looked after me. You've looked after everybody here as well. But you're only just paying back the hard work you put in here. Just a bit of crumbling, a bit of a, a silly old diamond. Not much. Well, it does more than I think you realise, Howard. <laughs> God. Anyway, oh, right. I should get, should get down to it. Oh, excuse. <laughs> <laughs> his nose. Don't give him a big pat on the shoulder. Pat your arm. I mean, you also keep in mind that you're like eight foot tall yeah. and massive. Your hand is like hit most of his back. It's like a pat on the shoulder is like. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he just sort of like pats it back and trots his trots off. Let me get back to Aroas. We'll uh, big party. Some, big party. Yeah. Put something together for Lancian. Yeah. As he walks past, just before he goes down on the ship, 
where the stairs lead up to the command console. Just puts the banner in that middle bit. Just begins immediately, takes the solar winds, and just begins to fly. Sentry will just look at it and just, yeah, just nod at it, give a, give a salute to the banner. Yep, nice. Leaky eyes, baby. Medical condition. I can't look at you because it's going to set me off. <laughs> Howard, did you expect Howard to be this? No. <laughs> this little I thing. gave him a stupid Bristolian accent, and just like Samwise Gamgee, he's killed, killed my soul. Great, my love. The soul was the ones that do it, though. Yeah. Soul was. I mean, that's what got me, Ted. Like he put on his little Bristolian accent, and I was like, oh, <laughs> we can't carry it for you, Mister Frodo. But I can carry you. It's that shit. Yeah. Fucking gets me every time. He's All right. Good egg. Married yeah. <laughs> so, anything else? Other than preparation and yeah, just, just getting, general like morale boosting. Have y'all taken short rest? Of, uh, those yes. of you who were down on hit points, I got my four sorcery points back. Thanks, okay, level yeah. twenty sorcerer. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> you it's some of those before. <laughs> I, uh, it's I such a good milestone. <laughs> <laughs> I used up. All of my hit dice to recover, and I still have two weeks. So you have you have no hit dice <laughs> remaining. No hit dice. He remaining. was really. I was bad. down to like two, I think, at the end yeah, of that. Yeah, because we forgot stupid. about the seventy from your um. Your eyes. Yeah, yeah. I, I forgot about that to begin with as well. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm now well back to full levels and spell slots. Okay. But um, yeah, I guess. Uh, gathering the crew that's going to be the infiltration will be heading towards the storm chaser as well. Well, right, like this is everyone here. It'll, the infiltration team will start on the storm chaser. Yeah, yeah. They'll have to separate. Yeah. So yeah, everyone is here. Basically, uh, maybe the last thing you see is uh, <laughs> uh, those of you when you're like leaving the Tassadar to like go back to the storm chaser. Um, you see Tassadar, this kind of blue Merlin like, kind of gaunt and thin, but like with a little wizardy goatee, and, like kind of bald head. He's completely he bald. Ears um, as well. Didn't he have spi um, pointy ears? Like he has Vulcan. like an elf and like kind of like ears and stuff Sorry, like that. Sorry, elf, not yeah. Vulcan. <laughs> yeah. He has elven ears, um, and he wears like almost like a scholar's kind of like robe, and almost looks like he's like wearing like slippers and stuff but like it's all just this kind of spectrally blue form um he is like stood in front of one of these valkyrian fighters and you just hear like no no this won't do no and he's like <laughs> making change like he's adding and like doing magical shit to it and like the the, the engineering team are like uh, sir you can't just check like we we what are you doing and he's just like no this won't the, you can tell that the uh, the arcane fluctuations are off by 0 0.6 millimeters uh, it won't do it won't do it needs to be perfectly aligned <laughs> you see it like beginning the, the ship kind of covered in blue runes begins to glow uh, as he's making changes to it and he'll just kind of like turn and t uh, tactily sort of like nod like don't chase us uh testa are you prepared for your I will be once the correct alignments are in place. Okay, now reminder that we don't have a huge amount of time here, so can you cope with a slight I am alignment? performing over seven billion calculations currently. I am, do not forget I am also managing this warship. I am okay, more than capable. Job. Okay, okay, great. Um, Why doesn't he do the infiltration, honestly? I don't know why everyone's looking My at My skill me. is in logistics. Well, uh, what are we, uh, Elf of Alfheim. Uh, my skill is in logistics. I am not a. I'm not some sneak thief. <clears throat> Could you um, just make sure my girlfriend comes home? That is the one called Thalia Whisperwind. Yes. Yes. I do not understand these mortal, intimate relationships of yours. Seem pointless and distracting distractions to me. But I will ensure that the mission is successful. I feel a lot better knowing that you're on it. As you should. <laughs> I right. forgot uh, how, uh, how much he loved himself. It's it, it would be tactically beneficial for Thalia to return to Nova. Why are you explaining this to me as if I do not understand? Okay, I'm just trying to... <laughs> he's a lot him. older than all of us. I know, I know. He's doing I know. like... He's, he's been around. Cook, imagine, if, imagine if... Imagine uh, if... How long? What do you call them? Babies. Uh, a baby came up to you and was like, do you know what would be a good idea if you did, I don't know, you swung your sword this way or something, whatever you adventurers do. <laughs> he's he's now, only yeah, three. How he's old actually is this really baby? quite... Three? He's three, yeah. yeah. You have existed for three cycles. Yes, yeah, yeah. How many cycles have you existed, Tester? Countless. I have been here... The, the Triumvirate have been in existence for millennia. 
thousands, hundreds of thousands. That's a few life cycles more than. I I remember when this one was a different one. Oh. I see the the, the 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 matrix that you carry. Yes. The Genesis relic. I remember then when it would, it belonged to several others. Who's I've seen it pass through Root? the hands of five guardians. Oh. Who's before Root? Before Root Prime. Yes. It would have been. DM face. Garador. Yes. <laughs> no. Garador the wise. <laughs> Screwfix. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great guardian. Don't say Optimus. It's, 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 it is because the brain keeps going. It's just like Optimus, 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 Ultra Magnus. And I'm That's like, why no. I, can, I can see it in your eyes. Uh, it would have been. I'm trying to think of like Samiptpo, uh, which is Optimus backwards. No, because guardians have set names. <laughs> you have to um, give me a second. It would have been Scoop Muck uh, and Dizzy. Square. <laughs> Saber, Saber Prime. Oh damn, that's cool. Okay. Oh, and who was before that? It would have been <laughs> <laughs> a name. <laughs> that is canonical. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and thematic. Wow, I didn't know there was a Jenny Prime. <laughs> that's a good name. Zenahort. Zenahort. <laughs> then he got norted. <laughs> Anyway, then Anson. But yes, uh, Tasta will return and prepare themselves. Morbius. No. It's How are you all feeling? <laughs> you feeling ready? We're ready to just Die. save. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. We need hyper focused laser precision. Yes. I am so hyper focused right now. We have to right sneak now. around a giant's ship. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. You know, in reality, you are but tiny little ants among people, really. Yeah. So the benefit. Mm. And the mm. you know, you're small. Reassuring. You can fit in the That's things that. Not I'm, well, I mean, no, he does have Jump a point. Jump into Astro. You're more sneaky because they're smaller. It's, it's a giant a, ship. It's a Ragnarok. Ship for Ragnarok level vessel. Yeah, but uh, he makes a point. A ship, a giant sized ship. You want to go on the ship? Has no. It has, um, what if we can't reach the door handles? You go under the door. Yeah. Pass what? You said we had that thing. You have I can one. cast it multiple times. I can cast it to guys in. This is, yeah, we'll you find did a way want out. the scroll. One no, scroll. I, I mean, I mean, doors. As in, in the if we're trying to get through, and the door and the handles like all the way up. I the... can jump. <sighs> Chris Rock. What sort of technology is it? Very like, are we talking Viking boat? I, in what it, visually? As in, like, do, what does Starbane know? Uh, I know there's very little out there. There's very little out there, and you basically kind of know what Quill knew, and there is some information, because there are still some giants that survive, like, generations after. But the Fenrir was an old ship, even, like, when Kallus was around. Like, it was destroyed before Kallus really began his empire, and that was thousands of years ago. Um, it is... It is te there is technology. It's kind of more like... Um, Magical. Uh, Eroes is it's more magical than technological. Crystals and stuff. Yeah, it's more crystals. It re resembles an enormous like warship, but completely sealed. Um, almost has you can imagine like these like giant sort of like shield like designs on the side. They're not shields, but it has those designs. It has like the curved draconic kind of head at the front, like a longbow, mm, but on okay, a huge yeah. scale. And then instead of like oars, it has ports for like guns and things like that, like turrets, like you know, with, tipped with crystals and things like that, and covered in runes. I think the only thing they know is that uh, giants use a lot of rune magic, which is very different to the magic spells that we know and the magitech of the Valkyrie Empire. They had their own kind of system uh, that they used, their own power. So the shield is more of a ward than anything. Yeah, it's a, it's a barrier. It's like a warded barrier. Yeah, it's not like a sci-fi shield. It's like an actual magical barrier, uh, like a warded, uh, created by these various runes. But And, and very little as it is known. Like, it's, ol it's old magic, runic magic. Um... When you return to the Storm Chaser as well, by the way, your team is assembled. Um, as you have some of the members still on the Astoria, you still have some like members spread around, but stood on the deck, uh, you see Danica wearing her sort of red and orange robes. She has this almost like gold shoulder armor and like a kind of crown-like halo. Um, and she is just wreathed in like, almost like this semi-permeable layer of flame around her. Cool. Next to her, you see Maximilian. Uh, he's dressed in Valkyrian armor, um, and he has new weapons and armor. Remember that he lost a lot of his stuff. It got a lot of it. It was destroyed. He's kind of replenished himself. He has a Magitek shield. He has full plate armor, and he has like a long-hafted axe.
axe, like a Magitek axe now. Um, and he's wearing that, his flaming hair, uh, very Ganondorf-y, uh, looking like a badass. Um, next to him is Protector, who has now been repaired um, from your last encounter into the, the jungle. Um, and uh, they're so tall, kind of like leaf-like vine pauldrons kind of sculpted over their thick stone and metal body. Um, they have like a big dark hood that covers up most of their head because you can still see that their face has still got some damage that was broken away um, by the uh, the knights that you fought. Um, they have a blade and a shield. Next to them, you see Norfear, uh, dressed in their tight kind of like leather cat suit, Black Widow-esque outfit. Uh, loads of like pouches and belts and straps all over her. She has a big thick cloak as well with a big heavy hood, um, hand crossbow and sort of like dagger-like blade, uh, very Metal Gear CQC kind of like used together. Um, sort of like nods in your direction. You see little Scout, who you haven't seen in a while. Um, he's like a little, he's a small guardian. He's probably only about three feet high. Um, and he has like these big, almost like a pair of night vision goggles, but are hit, that is his face. Um, and so he has like one eye is like longer than the other one and one's kind of like short. And he has all these different like lenses that flop in. Um, and he's got a big crossbow. You can see he has like this kind of like fold out guardian crossbow that he can sling on his back. And he's got loads of pouches and gear and things like that as well. You also notice that like his legs and hands, he almost has like spikes built into his forearms and legs that he can use to like climb on stuff and things like that as well. Um, and then finally you see Hope, uh, blonde hair, uh, currently probably uh, hugging or talking to a bunch of the wolf pack and talking about how cute they are. Um, blonde hair, flower crown. She is wielding, you see for the first time, she's got like a pink dress like over her human body, um, but she also has like a belt, which is a very ornate Feywild belt. And sheathed in it is a rapier, which you sort of recognize because it belonged to the little dandelion knight Armador, but it's now been like increased in size so that Hope can wield it, and she wields the blade of Armador. Um, Sir, fuck. Yeah. Sake. Yep. Uh, and, so fair. Yeah. yeah. Where's he? Uh, he's not here. He's now. No, Armador is uh, is with your Feywild. You do have Feywild forces. Yeah. It's just not one of these individual agents. So he's he's, he's in astral space. He's yeah. He's on the Astoria yeah. with all the other forces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just like that yeah. he came for the battle. Yeah. Some of them. I think that most of your war assets are split between like the Astoria, the dr dragon ship, and maybe some of the Valkyrian transports to kind of make sure that all your eggs aren't in one basket. Here's our cool. war asset. Yeah. Is it dandelion? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, team. We've got team infiltration. <clears throat> Hands yes. up. Hands up, team infiltration. No fear, like, red. <laughs> Scout's like, <laughs> hey, Scout? <Ow. laughs> uh, no fear is just like, puts her hand up, like, just me and hopes that, oh, that's me, I know, that's Yes, me. you're an infiltration team. Yes, I am. And I'm very got... good at sneaking. <laughs> we've got the Starfighter Green Side Squadron. Glasses. They're not they're, they're already in yeah. Green Squadron. Oh already yes, that's right. They're in the ship. Yeah, yeah at Good. the twin star. Well, they're already way ahead of us, and then we've well, got. Well, they're, they're probably like telepathically bonded. Yeah. Azaria, right? yeah, Azaria would probably cast that just bond? before you arrive. Okay, uh, are you hearing us, uh, Thalia? Yes, I'm here. What do you want? Hello. Hello. Oh, this is a very clear line. Yes. This is lovely. You're not going to be talking all the time. He's are probably you? going to be talking all the time. Please don't. I'll make it very important and okay. very brief. Okay. Um, and then we've got the Storm Chaser crew. Uh, am I right? Yeah. Uh, yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, we will protect this ship. We will protect the infiltration team, cause a distraction. Yes, please. And <laughs> pave the yes, way. Yes. The infiltration team will pave the way for Green Squadron. Whoop, whoop. I do whoop, whoop over telepathic bond. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> That's uh, right. Don't worry, Thalia. For the most part, you'll only be hearing from me um, I will assist you as much I can whoop, whoop. with, yep, whoop, whoop, whoop. You hear Rain's voice, please do not keep doing that whoop, whoop noise. <laughs> I'm All trying right. to manage lots of different communications right now. You're doing great. Thank you. Yes, well, the story, we will provide you updates as soon as the story is ready to move. Let us know and we will move into position as soon as we can. Um, I believe that uh, Lady Valor is also on this line. Yes, hi, I'm here. I, I'm sort of coordinating things with my father, so if you need anything from the Valkyrian forces, let me know and I will relay the message. Uh, much appreciated, Valor. Now, we all know our assignments, we know our missions. Between all of us and the individual teams, we have the smarts, the strength, and the ability to break through whatever comes at us, right? Right? Yes. Damn yes. straight. That's right! I, uh, that's so good, Quill! Yay! Thank you. Inside voice. Stealth. Side voices! Yeah. <laughs> 
So, very stealthy infiltration team. The quietest you've ever been. But if that you fails, know how good we are. Remember, that, you have the strength yeah. to break through it. Yes. You got the hammer. You have what you need. If you need to fight, fight. Like hell. I don't want to fight a giant. I don't want to fight. Oh no. If if stealth for once, through, for it's once speed. in my life, I don't want to fight. I want to get in, get back out again, and then go and kill Hadar, please. The element of surprise, quickness, getting Thalia in as soon as the shields are down. Once you've dimmed those shields, Norfield would just say and point at Nova and be like, "That's all on you, Vija." You're the one that we need in this, out of everyone, like... Big brain. We need your brain. Mm -hmm. And also figuring out where to go when we get inside. Uh, I haven't heard you guys talk about this yet, but we don't know where this barrier system is, right? I was just thinking that. Where exactly are we going on that big ship? We'll have to figure out once we get inside. We can't know everything. But... Well, whatever you can find, feed it back to me and I'll try and guide whoever I can to the right places. I... Yeah. Scout's like, I, I can try and assist with that as well. I'm not very good with magic, but if you can give me at least a map, I can generally figure out sort of key locations and things like that. That's, that's kind of what I'm good for. That's what I'm here for. That's my purpose. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll be really nice, and just as soon as we go in, they'll be a, you are here, mm -hmm. map. Oh, that could help. That could you know, really like help. when we were on, what was that Valkyrian planet? I guess, oh no. Gideon Prime. Gideon Prime. That one. Yeah. You know, they had all that shit everywhere. You know, just, you are here. Here's Best where you go to that get that to this thing. absolutely doesn't exist, and we have to work with what we've got. So what do we do if the map absolutely doesn't exist, which it definitely doesn't? Exist? Arcane Eye? Uh, if I directions? I'm, they'll have to have some sort of system for navigating a ship like that. I'm sure there right. must be something. You'll be able to find your way around. The Arcane Eye is currently on Thalia's ship, so ah, yes. I can't assist in that regard. But I can try and help as best I can to guide you if if needed. Or scout can help. I mean, you also, you, it might also be that the Storm Chaser, you might be able to use the Storm Chaser's Magitech, or Magitech sensors Scanners. to like kind of figure out, yeah. be like, oh, I've got like a power signal here. You can investigate that maybe and stuff like that. Yeah. We'll find the right um, place to break in and that should hopefully be close enough for you to find out exactly where you need to go. We'll find out. With that, we're going to take a break. Clear okay. skies. When we come back to it. Clear skies. Clear skies, everyone. Clear skies. When we come back... Who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> that was all of the NPCs. All the NPCs at once. I just do a generic voice for all of them at once. A crowd Can of you heroes. Clear skies. Clear skies. Clear skies. Clear skies. Who's going on? But that's it. That's going to be it for part one. Thank you so much. We'll be back in part two very shortly. Operation Fenrir begins. Oh, I like oh that. nice. Mm. Clear skies. Bye. Clear skies. Welcome to part two of High Rollers. Our champions have been discussing their plans to assault Entropis, a plane where the prison realm of Hadar is supposedly located, or at least accessed. To do so, the party need to take down an enormous giant astral ship called the Fenrir. To do that, they've come up with a plan to infiltrate the ship, disable its arcane barriers, and then send Thalia and the Twin Star Longbow to blow it up from the inside. Uh, meanwhile, the Storm Chase will be trying their best to protect and be on standby, ready to extract their infiltration crew from the space. Storm Chase is standing by. Storm Chase is standing by. Green Gross is standing by. <laughs> Big Green Giant yeah, standing by. What are we, what's infiltration? Is that, are we red team? You can be blue team. Blue team? Oh, yeah, because yeah, I'm blue. But Ayla's red. Purple team. Purple team. Pur yeah, purple team. You don't need a team name. Anyway, purple nurples. Absolutely by. do. I just called with, them sneaky boys. With preparations having been made, it is now time to begin. A few hours after your meeting, while well, the task started to discuss these plans, the fleet, the massed Valkyrian fleet that has been gathered together by Callus Valkyrian, the Astoria, the Storm Chaser, the various Dragon Soul ships that you brought from Aroas makes their way onwards to the very edges of astral space. You cannot use subplanar travel to reach Entropis. The closer you are to Hadar, the more dangerous the infinite staircase and the river sticks become. So the travel is done purely across the astral sea, or astral space as it's sometimes called. It is a slow process, but you see the distant red star, a light that has been ever-present 
and many visions and glimpses of your future. The red glow becomes bigger and bigger and bigger as you journey towards it. And soon, you notice it is not the only thing. As you look out, as the last few planar stars begin to diminish, and you begin to look out on just endless black void with just the single red star, you notice an almost haze, like a heat haze from a hot stone road. And at the center of that haze, you see what at first you might mistake as a dull gray marble. And as you draw closer, it too increases in size. And that heat haze begins to take on more clear forms. Hundreds of thousands of ships, of creatures, of aberrant abominations surrounding the dull gray plain of Entropis. Among the ships, one large one stands out. It looks ancient, parts of it twisted and broken, almost decrepit or broken. Like a long ship that has been carved from stone and engraved with runic sigils that glow a dull blue. Crystal-tipped weapons poke out of small holes and various platforms aboard the deck of this enormous covered warship. A Ragnarok-class giant astral ship, the Fenrir. Behind this massive fleet of Hadar's forces, you see this featureless, perhaps only seeing the rocky, grey, jagged tips of mountains, but no oceans, no forests, no life. The plain of Entropis, and hovering above it all, a red light. Seeing it up close, you realise that there is no actual star here that is emanating this red light. There is nothing. Beyond Entropis, there is just black. But it is like seeing a light through a film. Something that exists beyond that black space. Like a light pressed against thick black cloth, so strong that its light is shining through. There is nothing beyond Entropis. But in the far realm, Hadar's power stretches out. All ships, all fleets, prepare for battle. Engage the Hadar forces. Get the Storm Chaser to the Fenrir. And with that, the Storm Chaser lurches into action. You have in front of you, you watch as several of the Valkyrian ships surge forward to engage as you begin to see the swarm come alive. Like a nest of locusts that have been agitated, they surge forward like a, an amorphous blob of life, of anti-life. You watch as the Valkyrian ships rock out and begin to try and clear you a path towards the Fenrir. And you see the Fenrir's power as its weapons charge up and fire these great arcs of light that just streak through the space, cleaving Valkyrian cruisers in half with one blast. One nearly takes the edge of the Storm Chaser, but Araya manages to throw the ship to the side at the last second as it careens past, destroying one of these warships behind you. You also see one other force on your side surge forward. Not a ship, a woman. Clad in starlight armor, just scorching through the black void, like a streaking shooting star, she plows into one of these abominant aberrant ships and just with a sheer force rips through it with a physical being. 
Then you watch as light, blasts of light, like lances, shoot out of her hands into more oncoming vehicles and, and ships and creatures. As Siaska herself shows some of her godly power, hoping to keep you protected. As long as she can. <laughs> <laughs> you need to reach the Fenrir. Mm -hmm. What are you all doing? <sighs> It's a great question. That's a, yeah, that's a really that's good really, question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have everything ahead of you. Yep. There is no shortage of targets. There are dozens of ships in your way. There is debris from the battle going on around you. I would like to know what all of you are going to do. Shit, well, yeah. I think Lucius is at the helm with Orion. Yep. It's ensuring that everyone is in their positions and he's just basically in a commanding role, uh, okay. assisting everyone. Is there anyone you would like to assist specifically with your captain ability? Um, I would be probably um, focusing on Howard and ensuring that he's okay in engineering. In, in the gun. Oh, in the engineering room. Okay. Because he's yep. most... Would you like him to uh, be doing anything specifically in that case? Would you like to try? He can basically grant extra power to a specific system. Like he could give a D4 to Orion, who will need to make a piloting check. He could give a D4 to a weapon attack uh, to make something more accurate. Uh, what about shields? Uh, he can't boost them, they are currently at maximum. Okay. Yeah. But he could divert, you could also increase your frontal shields. You currently have 50 shields in the front of the Storm Chaser, 50 in the back, and 100 to the sides. You could reinforce the front shields. You are basically yeah, about to careen into this hive. They are, everything is in front of you right now. I'm gonna divert shields to the front. Okay, he's gonna take 20 points uh, from sides or back. From the back. All right, 20 points from the back rear shields, and he's going to apply them to the front. So you Good now, job, Howard. You have 30 shields at the back and 70 at the front. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we'll go round. Uh, anybody else got an idea, or I'll start calling out names. How soon is it until we need to jump? Uh, you've got a few, got a few rounds, maybe. Few like rounds. If you want to think of it like a couple rounds of making skill checks and stuff. Can we, <clears throat> can we, um, like? team up so like howard's obviously doing the shields can i help with absolutely like, the if you would like to give an advantage power. you certainly can uh yeah you can go down and do that absolutely you can yeah. you can go do that i would also say that like you know you are going to be p flying through a dense field of enemies mm -hmm. you could just be like i'm gonna eldritch blast or i'm gonna throw my hammer as we fly mm -hmm. past and try and hit because there are creatures of all different shapes and sizes mm -hmm. there are these massive cruisers there are these massive bio ships there are also creatures that maybe would be like huge like they're flying aberrant like tentacle corrupted dragons or wyverns that are mutated into these like living vessels mm -hmm. you see smaller valkyrian star fighters similar to the twin star like there is plenty of enemies um, I, but I, you could also assist with any of the ship systems. I think I'll assist because I want to assist the guns so we can basically sure. punch our way through. Sure, so um, you don't want to assist Howard or you want to divert power to give an extra D4 to Penny? Power to... So I don't think you have anybody in the rotary turret. Energy right cannon. I can Kamara. get oh, Kamara. Yeah. Kamara's in. I, I was going to suggest I could get in it for now. Uh, Kamara's, 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 Kamara's already in it. Yeah. Um, yes. To be honest, you, you can probably do more throwing your hammer than the guns can do anyway. Um, I'll, I'll divert some um, power to the energy cannon that Penny's on. All right, well, let's have you make that attack then, uh, Nova, um, as if that's what you want Penny to do. So this is going to be, so it's with Penny. This would normally be a d20 plus 7 uh, with an extra d4. 17. Nice. Nice. Plus four. And you're just targeting something in your way. Just forward. Like, Absolutely. Out. Um, uh, so 18, 19, 20, 21. 21. Plus seven, did you say as well? Yeah, plus so, seven. Yeah, seven. easily enough. Don't worry about the damage because um, there's so many targets. Like, we're not going to worry about tracking HP and stuff like that. But with a, the, the front cannon, this Azaria Perel created cannon that was affixed to the Storm Chaser, you watch as this single beam of light rockets forward and just cleaves one of these smaller ships that's flying directly towards you, peppering the front shields, just cleaves it before it gets a chance to properly fire. <laughs> as the Storm Chaser just rockets forward, continuing on um, as you do so. All right, so that'll be uh, Nova and Penny done. Uh, anybody else got any ideas of things they would like to do? I would like to try and just stop any creatures from boarding, Yeah, I absolutely. Guess. Like, cause- Sure. Yeah, uh, anything me... that I can push back off this ship, Yeah, I that will sounds perfect. That. Give me a athletics 
check for this. So this is like, you watch as like these winged, almost like gargoyle-sized creatures. <laughs> they kind of fly and like try and land on the deck, trying to get at the crew and Ayla just runs up. 21. 21. You watch as uh, Ayla, you just kind of, with slams of the hammer and shoving them back off into Astral Sprays, almost causing them to collide with some of the Valkyrian ships on your side. They just get splattered against the force of the impact. I just will throwing use them, them off as to the ammunition side. Yeah, to you hit them, other ships. Throw them at the other ships um, as you do so. Wham! Throwing them to the sides. Um, I, uh, I want to analyze the mass in front of us and as if I am flying through the Valley of Storms itself, to uh, chart find a course. the correct path through. Like, right. it's constantly writhing and moving, but try and spot the right time now, to get to that point. So, okay, so here's my question. Are you trying to help plot a course for a riot to follow, mm. or are you trying to watch out for dangers that might become, like, upcoming threats? Uh, that's going to determine the type of skill check I want you to make. Yeah, I, I think it is predominantly finding a course for a riot to right. that is that case, evading and... Can you make a survival check for survival. it, please? Survival, okay, that's not bad, actually. Plus 12. Ooh. I mean, you are a member of the Messenger Guild. <sighs> 31. 31. <laughs> As it is over 30, it's extra progress. Oh! Uh, so, Quill, looking ahead, and although you no longer have the, the sort of oracle power of the Eye of the Storm, there's something about that the eye that Siaska helped heal. It's like you see pathways of starlight, like not quite seeing the future, but like seeing ghostly images of where maybe things might be. And then using your own like knowledge, almost like seeing the wind currents that mm. you would like fly on as a bird on a rowis. And with quick, like, you know, tapping the, the runic sigils on the command console of the Storm Chaser, using this magitech, you send these details to Araya, you send them to Nova and Howard. Like, we need power on this, on the left side engines to make this tight turn. Mm. Araya, you need to switch in three, two, one, now! <laughs> like, you're kind of giving these, like, you know, incredible directions to weave this course through this just oncoming mass of death uh, <laughs> as you do so. Death. Nice. Hell yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Sentry. Um, I think Sentry would, um, thinking about what Kamara said to her, I think she will stand with the wolf pack mm -hmm. and use her sunbeam to help the wolf pack direct their shots towards any oncoming, like, yeah. Oh, like coming. a laser guy. Yeah, I mean, also, I mean, the sunbeam's going to do damage as well, right? Um, so, uh, in this case, what I'd like you to roll for me then is. Sunbeam is normally a saving throw, but it's yeah. not really going to be appropriate in this scenario. So I would say, why don't you roll for me um, a d20 plus your spell attack, which should be your proficiency in charisma modifier. Plus three, I think, right? But it'll be your pro proficiency as well, so it should be plus nine, I think. Spell attack. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, plus nine. So just roll this for me. Oh. Thirteen. What was that demon noise? Uh, <laughs> She's corrupted. Ah! Ah! So, um, I mean, the sunbeam rockets out, and you maybe take out some of the smaller creatures and things like that, but this is very different to, like, fighting something on the deck or in these close quarters. Like, trying to predict where these ships are going to move, it's just quite hard, and you're not able to quite track, and a lot of the beam goes wide and doesn't count, and the, the wolf pack are having a hard time following it because, you know, they're trying to aim in a different way, and you just don't quite get the feeling that, like, you've managed to necessarily help guide their shots as, as much as you would have liked to. Um... Okay. Uh, I also need, because you currently have Kamara on the rotary turret, yep. um, I'd like to have somebody roll that for me as well. Hey, look. Me? Yep. So it's just, uh, this is going to be a d20. It's Kamara. So this would be at plus six. Uh, it's got... uh, seven. <laughs> seven? Unfortunately not. Plus so you. Six, the... or... Plus six. Oh, okay. oh, seven plus six. Seven plus six. So 13. 13 yeah. yeah, so sadly, um, yeah. the shots just, she collides again, maybe taking out some small creatures, but not doing enough to really help you barrel through this oncoming storm. Um, the last thing I need, and I'm going to have remake it because Araya was her character, yeah. I need you to make a piloting check for Araya to actually guide the storm chaser through this. Mm. 
Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm, Deuces. That's a check. Yeah. Uh, t- two. Two. Uh, two. Whereas uh, she has plus, plus ten, four. I think. Ten uh, she has plus ten to piloting, so only a twelve, unfortunately. Does she get any advantage from Quill being a master? Sadly, not. No, that you, you gained the uh, like, you gained uh, bonuses from that, but you gained sort of progress towards this, but not enough. Um, so unfortunately, Araya, just the just sheer number, the sheer weight of things flying at her. There's a couple of impacts, a couple of like near misses, and things like that. Stop using um, that dice, man. That's mocked. I know. That stop mocked. using it. I told you. Uh, <laughs> Every time she's used it, I would like <laughs> it's me. I'm the each one of you <laughs> to roll a d10 for me, please. D10. Oh, yeah, please. Yes. Four. Uh, three. Two. Five. Four. Three. Nine. Two. Nine. Oh, you roll well on that one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got five. A five. five, four, three, D20 two, is nine. Useless. Nine. And what was the last one? Three. Yeah, you, oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. I think I've Five, got four, it all. three, two, nine. Uh, your front shields are going to take 23 points of damage. Oh. As like, you know, with a right skill, you managed to reduce it <laughs> some. <laughs> You've cleared away. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so it was a so, bad roll. Yeah. <laughs> I love oh. that Mark gave you that dice, and every time you've rolled it, it's, it's been worst. garbage. <laughs> well, I didn't give her the d10. That was all. That's, that's, that's all. That's Do you want one of mine? I don't um, know if it'll help. Oh, you watch as trying to avoid it, you impact into creatures. Various corrupted fighters get shots off on your front arc. The storm chaser is now in the thick of this swarm. This is you pl- plowing into the main force. There is a short distance between you and the Fenrir, but you're not close enough just yet. Um, what do you guys do? Oh, maybe we should scan. You are now currently in the thick of it. I don't know. Wait, scan what, sorry? The Fenrir, you can scan I'll use ships my um, bonus action to tell how to boost. Okay. If we can divert all to engines. Okay, and then so you'd like him to give D4 to Araya. Let's punch it, Araya. All right, uh, so is there anything else you'd like to do? Or just like help basically command that. I'm gonna team. keep assisting and keep there just to make sure everyone's doing all right. right. Uh, I will give. Which, oh, go on. Oh yeah, I was doing it for Howard, wasn't I? Yes, so, but yeah. that would be a bonus a bonus action to command, or like an action to command somebody, and then you can bonus action inspire them with advantage. I would like to. Advantage so you can give it a Raya. Yeah, that's what I figured. Like, like D four from the engines, and then advantage from yes, you please. basically helping a Raya. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. Um, so no direct uh, sort of progress, but you're kind of setting everybody up to try and help them and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll have a Raya always do the check. A Raya's piloting check is at the very end always. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody else got anything that they want to do? Um, I will say trying to do the same thing again will be a lot harder and will not get you as much uh, success because you are now in the thick of it right so there are still things trying to land on the ship but you are also being surrounded on all sides by vessels they're shooting at you Mm. um, so there are lots of things so we're still far from the Fenrir right you're far enough that you cannot make the jump just yet not the jump but could I make the scan you can certainly attempt to give us an early direction of where we're headed it will be harder because you're uh, far away but you could try Burgeoning. Yeah. <laughs> Harder. Well, this won't necessarily be Quill's perception because this is going to be like scanning the Magitek. This is going to be more of a like an Arcana check. I refuse to use other perceptions. So. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. Incorrect. <laughs> do you want to? Is that what you want to do, or does somebody else? Um, want, Tom has a think. I will uh, delay it for now until it's a little bit closer. I think. Okay. Um, I'll have a think. Okay. Can I divine sense? Just to try, like, again, trying to help the wolf pack. Yeah, okay, so we'll, like, try and use it to try and, uh... Like, sense any, like, fiends, undead, celestials that might be coming towards us, and I could be like, right, there. Okay. Aim there. Like, sure. Yeah, make a... So for this one... Yeah, this is kind of be like a perception check, but you're using your magical divine sense to try and help guide it. Yeah. Um, there'll be a, like a bonus because you're using your magical ability. It's not going to be an automatic success, but there'll be a, a, a kind of hidden bonus to this. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check. This is with Quill's magic dice. 19! Oh. So it's 21. 21. Totally. With uh, the, the additional bonus, uh, yeah, you think so I'll kind of... It. <laughs> For Century, this would be like you stood on the deck and just opening yourself up. And Divine Sense doesn't have this huge range, but it's enough that you kind of get this early warning sign in the chaos of everything happening. You sense undead, and primarily there's no Celestials or Fiends. Uh, there maybe are some that are corrupted, um, but mainly like you get the sense of undeath uh, with a lot of these aberrations and things like that as well. You can kind of almost call out, and several of these things try and land or try and attack. 
and you're like, now, this side, and like the wolf pack turn around, blast them away, and it does indeed help, uh, help their, their guidance. Um, all right, perfect. Anybody else got an idea of something they would like to do? You also have NPCs if you are still looking for time. Thinking of replenishing shields, the rear shields. Okay. Because <clears throat> the front are on 50 um, and the sides are 100, but the back is on 30. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is 1d10 plus 3. It is, yes. 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, you get nine extra shields to your back. So you watch as like Nova is trying to kind of almost you know, rebuild the shielding, this magical shielding that Azaria built in, rebuilding it around the rear of the ship. And you can see that there are, like, swarms of these creatures probably going to be able to turn around and start ch pursuing you and attacking from the rear this time. Um, all right. Uh, can I command anyone with a bonus action? Uh, yeah, what would you... Who, who, you've got uh, Kamara and uh, b -b 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 Penny on the guns. Uh, I guess Kam uh, Penny again, like, sure. just keep blasting on the She front. doesn't have a D4 this time, so it's just the D10, uh, D20 plus... I think I said seven. Yeah, seven. Sixteen. Sixteen. Um, the, again, she does fire. Uh, this time, with the creatures being all around, the cannon does strike, but it doesn't quite take out any of the big threats. Mm -hmm. um, does still do some damage, but unfortunately isn't going to earn you any progress towards getting closer to the Fenrir. My... Um, assist... Kamara by yeah. trying to look for the vessels that are going to come around and mm -hmm. follow us from behind and try and get her to target them at the side absolutely. before they get a chance to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this can be, you can either um, give Kamara advantage on the attack roll um, and then you can make the attack roll with advantage for Kamara, um, which would basically be like the help action. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you can make a perception check to try and sort of like do this on a not just for Kamara but for the whole ship, like trying to keep a watch on your six. Um, I'll let you do either. Might give advantage sure. to Kamara. Kamara. All right. D twenty with advantage plus six. Twenty one. Twenty one. You watch as like you're kind of helping Kamari or keeping her watching the six and you see a couple of these kind of more agile, um, yeah, like almost like warped, corrupted wyverns that have got Magitek almost fused into them and they swoop round very rapidly and are coming up underneath the Storm Chaser in the rear. Um, and you see them before Kamara does and you call out, you know, lo their location to Kamara. Kamara turns round, ah, <laughs> just blast them out of the sky, clearing them, preventing them from doing any damage into your rear this turn. Perfect. All right, great stuff. So that's Kamara and Ayla down. Quilly boy. Um, I think I'm just gonna do a little cantrippy guidance, to be honest. Um, Who would you like to give guidance to? Um, so... Raya is the only one to act this turn, but that guidance would carry over to the next, uh, if there is another round of these uh, kind of like fighting towards the Fenrir. Yeah, it lasts for a minute. Uh, and I suppose it doesn't doesn't hurt. She has advantage as well, so just ensuring that it works best. Um, so yeah, Araya, I think right. would work. Okay. Um, uh, in that case, uh, yeah. Uh, is there anything on it? Well, I don't suppose there's actually anybody left really to give a bonus action to. Uh, so it's just you're going to basically think, um, assist uh, Kamara, uh, Araya. Maybe uh, Norfear can be just readying the. Yeah, like the, the 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 other teams like Danica and Max and that they are basically like locked in for the next stage of this. Right. This is like they're kind of getting to the Fenrir okay. and they're kind of locked in. Assume that like Max and, and Protector are basically doing the same thing Ayla was. They're protecting the crew. It's like these. They're and like the whole time things have been landing on the storm chaser deck and they've been fighting ayla's like been shoving them off like the wolf pack have been fighting them off as well um danica has been blasting them with fire Norfear in and hope they've all been like fighting off the creatures that are landing but allowing you guys to focus on this bigger task um in that case we jump down to the very last thing which is going to be a ryan making a pilot and check this is with advantage and 2d4 <gasps> extra <What? laughs> okay. i believe Five plus with advantage. Advantage. Oh, yeah. Four. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my <laughs> dice. Oh, she, she has so now. many. Well, Twelve total. Twelve total. Twenty-two with the plus ten. Uh, oh, with the plus oh. twenty-two with the plus ten. Yeah. There we go. Uh, I mean, oh my sorry. god! You did very well with the d fours at least. Yeah, the d fours came in clutch. All right. Uh, so with this round, uh, I would all of you roll a d8 for me, please. D8. Date. It's a date. Don't Follow roll up. well on this. 
Okay. Five. Two. Three. Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, nice. Oh. Uh, that is going to be 15 points of damage to all shield locations. Uh, all around you. 15. Yes, 15 points of damage to all shield locations. As you are peppered by fire from various magitic weapons, these creatures slam into the shields, maybe trying to attack the hull with claws and bites. They're eventually kind of fended off by your team um, on board, but you do manage to successfully fend them off. So, this is where you now have a choice. Uh -oh. The Storm Chaser is drawing close enough to the Fenrir that you, the team could attempt to jump over. I'm going to leave it up to you. You guys can go basically another round of trying to get as close and fight off as many of these things around you as possible to give that team jumping over the best chance. Or they can attempt to jump now and we will roll some dice and see how they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of up to you. It's like, a, do you feel that you are at this point? And, I, you know, I, I'm happy to, you know, kind of give you a vague idea of, you know, there's maybe a 50-50 chance. I mean, between... Uh, the storm chaser. And it's not that they would fail doing it, it's like, do they do it and have problems, or do they do it and it's all good, all gravy? Can we do that through the vessel of Norfear? So Lucius calls out, are we close enough yet? It's risky, we're getting close, but this jump would be dangerous. And the, these things are all around us, all these creatures, we need to get a few more of them off our case, ideally. What do we think, sneaky team? I feel confident that myself and Ayla could do it, but I'm worried about the rest. All right. Get dunked on. <laughs> All right. I, no, I mean, she's not wrong. Yeah. You get dunked on or you can die. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to lose hope. Now, keep in mind that the longer this goes on, yeah. you are subject, like the Storm Chaser's yeah, yeah. shields are going to take more damage and stuff like that. But six seconds. Punch <laughs> uh, it, Howard. Ab Ryan. Abstracted time. Abstracted time. So, I mean, so between the Storm Chaser and the, the Fenrir, Fenrir, there's just still a swarm of all sorts of stuff is like imagine like you are diving into like a, a vastly overwhelming force like that you are outnumbered massively a lot of hadar but although you are outnumbered a lot of these hadar creatures are smaller some of them are significantly weaker there are several big ships and right now you can see around you the valkyrian fleets that came with you the fenrir is carving them up like it is it is not going well you have some time but like the longer that things take yeah. the greater the risk yeah right um but it's up to close storm as chaser can. needs to be close to the fenrir anyway for when we're yeah I mean, it's like just, you you yeah. could you it's could just... make the jump now it's just it's risky right now i want us to get close to the hull so like sure. these long range you weapons can push on for it we're kind of like beyond the threshold of them Pointing and shooting yeah. at us. Yeah, so basically the, the Fenrir, like the Storm Chaser is quite small, so its main cannons have a hard time shooting the Storm Chaser, which is why the Storm Chaser... Get in the shadows. Is. We're Millennium Falcon. You are basically like under and <laughs> yeah. weaving next to the hull, but that means you're very vulnerable to these smaller creatures. Right. You're also vulnerable to like other weapons and things like that uh, going on around you. Um, so if, that, if you want to push on a little bit more, it's what are you guys going to do? Like to help get the, the Storm Chaser closer, fend off some of these other creatures. Um, what are you guys going to do? How long are we intending to delay? Just one more? One more. more. One more. One more. Yeah. One more. And maybe I'll telepathic bond to Nova and say, is there anything we can do to push our engines to the max? I don't want to metagame it too much, so I'm not going to tell you the exact details, but the way it's going to work is I've been tracking your progress. Mm -hmm. uh, when you decide to make the jump, you're going to roll some dice, and I'm going to compare it to how much progress you've made. If you get more, okay. the jump is clear. There's no no complications. If it is less, you have problems. So the yeah. more progress you earn, the higher the chance of doing it. But it's always going to be a no, nice we're, roll. We're guaranteed one from my navigation, <laughs> but I don't know how many others we might have. <laughs> also, <laughs> don't, ever, don't ever say we're guaranteed it, because I've seen you roll a one yeah. on a percentage. No, no, I mean, I've, I've, I know that we've got oh, at right. least one progress. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not going to tell you how much progress and stuff. Are you done well? Not, not metagaming it. I, I still don't think we are there yet, so maybe next turn. Um, I think one more round. Sure. Yeah, yeah it's up to you guys. I think one yeah. more round would make me All right. feel happy. All right, All right, so what are folks doing? <laughs> Um, so can, I think Ayla might, for a bit, try and yeah, try and help yeah. guide the wolf pack mm -hmm. in terms of like Passage. both, well, kind of protect them by Maybe removing threats from their immediate vicinity, um, and sort of, I guess, inspire them in a little bit 
to like because she throws stuff at them all the time, you yeah. know. Yeah. I kind of want her to like be like, right, guys. You know what? You got this. Be, don't you? <laughs> Nothing good. Intimidate. Yeah, intimidate. <laughs> <laughs> we do intimidation is, is not bad. It's not it's great though. Here. I rolled a three though, so it's only nine, which it's is only trash. Only nine. All right. Uh, right. So you right. kind of swing in, you're fighting stuff off the deck with the allies beside you. The wolf pack are desperately trying to do their best, but as you start like screaming and yelling and things like that, it's almost like, ah! <laughs> like they, they start going a bit berserk rage and a bit more sort of uncontrolled. Um, they, they're definitely happy to destroy stuff, but perhaps there's a lack of cohesion uh, that's uh. taken place. But, you know, it's just you doing what you do. Is um, Sentry Sunbeam still beaming? It, technically it is, but it's like, imagine that like it's done as much as it can do yeah, at yeah, this yeah. point, right? Like, okay. you know, that's why I'm kind of keeping it a bit abstract. Like, you know, you don't know, we're not tracking stuff like how much hit point damage things have taken and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So with like you guys, you guys aren't in risk of taking any damage. It's more like how c close can you get the Storm Chaser right now? How much damage is the Storm Chaser going to take to get you there? Yeah. yeah. Can Sentry do a bless? A, a hashtag bless, yeah, hashtag absolutely. Bless. Yeah. Who'd you, who would you like to give bless to? Um, let's see, I'll do a level uh, three, so that's two additional targets. So that's five. Five. Five targets, seven. yeah. It's three base from level one. Yeah. And then two more. So five, yeah. So who'd you like to give it to? Um, I guess, um, Lucius, Nova, Quill. Um, so this is to attack rolls and saving throws. So attack rolls and saving throws. Yep. Um, two more. Let's do a Raya. I'd say for the purposes of this, I'll count ability checks as well. Like, these are kind of like, these kind of skill challenging checks. I would allow a Bless to add a d4 to these. Okay. Um, Araya? Yeah, Araya and Penny. Yeah, Penny's on the main gun. Yeah. All right, yeah, okay. Like. Well, those people have an extra d4 to any rolls they make. Now, I have, I have something that will affect small and medium creatures, but it's huge and cool. <laughs> Tell me what is. I want to punch a hole in this uh, mess of creatures by casting Whirlwind. And what level spell is that? It's a seventh level spell. It's a pretty good spell. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's. I mean, it is only ten feet. Why don't, don't feet worry tall. too much about the mechanics of it, right? Because I know Whirlwind is and, and how much damage does it normally do if it does like affect a creature? Ten d six on a failed save. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's, it, it's continuous, you concentrate on it and can move it and stuff as well, Up right? Up to a minute, 30 yeah. feet of movement. I would say, because it is a huge expenditure of resources, and this is the way I like to do it, this will be an automatic success. Because it's such a high level spell. Can I combo a spell with Quill? Sure, absolutely, of course you can. No, I'm gonna send in <laughs> Lucius's luscious light as a beam of light to kind of blind and distract them so that they don't see the whirlwind coming. Okay. What level are you going to do this? Oh, I'm going to do it at fourth. Okay. <laughs> you can do it at fourth. I would still like you to make a spell attack. So as if you were making a spell attack. What I got a bless. Do you, have a, do you have a hashtag blessed? That's going to be a four. That's it is a four. A four. Oh. This is going to be a net 20. It's a four. It's four. <laughs> oh, I thought it was the little fox symbol. No, it's blue, the fox symbol, but my plus is 13, so 17. Uh, what? No. 21 total. 8 plus 13. 21 total. 21. It's not bad. That's good job it was a 21. Uh, so, with that, you watch as Lucius, you cast this glittering light, and maybe some of the more powerful creatures aren't affected by it. They recognize what it is, they turn away, you don't catch them. But a lot of the kind of smaller um, bio abominant aberration creatures, and they're like horrible mixtures of like Mind Flayer and Beholder smashed together, or like Wyvern and Magitek kind of blended together, or undead kind of dragons that have been given tentacles instead of wings. Like they're horrible abominations of creatures. Um, and you catch many of them in it, and as they're blinded and burnt by the light and the acid and things like that, you watch as Quill, you just whoosh with this gust of wind. And in astral space, this basically has the effect of like knocking them away, throwing them with force into other ships, like causing chaos amongst this swarm of lesser creatures that are everywhere. Um, and yeah, that's going to be an automatic, so that's a seventh level spell. I'm going to absolutely just make no check for that. Cool. And then the Lucius Lost Light like, does add in a little extra help there as well. Sweet. I think uh, the whirlwind itself is also just this 
bright. It's like you're metal. continually like. <laughs> it's wind, but it's also like specks of the luscious light in there as yeah, well as it swirls it. around. Yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah. very cool like vortex. Yeah, very cool. Um, and very cool. Lucius just points at the hole to Orion. Yeah. You know where to go. <laughs> I'm getting us there. <laughs> Trying to move her in, but we got a couple more people to go first before we make that check. So I think Nova, Penny, uh, Kamara. and Kamara have not yet acted, and Howard technically. Mm. Got a dumb idea. <laughs> I love dumb ideas. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of want to be on deck, wait for some flappy creature to be within 30 feet, summon Tiangong on it, and then transfer consciousness or something? But basically try and get Tiangong to steer it into other ships or bad guys or something like that. <laughs> mm. Interesting. That's mm. cool. Mm -hmm. Hearing. So I would say, quite, yeah, I would say strong. this would be an acrobatics, acrobatics because this is like teleporting them on, jumping onto this creature, and then using their like dexterity to like drive this thing into something else. Yeah. I mean, it's technically your acrobatics. Plus three. It's cool though. Yeah, I mean, it feels plus a D four. The echo as well is like a one of those expendable things, I suppose. Yeah. It's not, it's not you doing it, so it's not that dumb. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, the way it rolled then. <laughs> Is it nearly a 20? It did going. 1, then 20, and then it's 12. <laughs> 12 plus 3 is a 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19. Uh, all right. So you watch as Tiangong kind of like appears in the air. You kind of take a momentary control as they plunge the blade in and try and steer this creature. And it does plunge into some of the smaller creatures. Maybe not quite enough to make a huge impact, but it's definitely cleared some of them away um, as it kind of poof, knocks several into the side, sends several screening off. Um, but it just maybe could have nearly been a bit better. But still does have some effect. Does have some effect. Looks cool, though, and that's the main um, thing. Yeah. In that case, uh, Howard, if nobody else commands the other three, they're just going to take their basic actions. Howard is going to add a d4 to the main gun, um, and then okay. Penny and Kamara are both going to shoot. Can I have somebody to volunteer to shoot for Kamara, please? All right, D20 plus six, please, Lucius. Um, 18. 18, okay. Does she have a plus, plus, she has a plus four? Uh, no, well. Kamara doesn't. I think you gave it to Penny. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so you watch as Kamara's blasting several of these small things, but not enough to, again, make a big dent into what you're about to do. You've also begun to see that the Fenrir's own, like, kind of close weapons are, like, powering up and are beginning to shoot towards the thing as well. Maybe Kamara tries and takes some pot shots at some of those weaponry, but just bounce off the shield. Um, then I would like somebody to make a roll for Penny, please, with the main gun, with 2d4 extra. Can Yeah. <laughs> I want to shoot something. Kamara and Penny. Ooh. Oh, big boy alert. Watch out, it's me. Sizable lad. 25 <laughs> on the 25. dice roll. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oncoming, you see actually uh, the oncoming towards you, like kind of trying to scoot around to you, is one of these corrupted Valkyrian cruisers. Um, and Penny just waits for the right moment as it begins to charge its own cannon. Penny fires, catching the weapon as it powers up, causing like a chain reaction of like magical explosion. <laughs> nice. And then it begins to tilt and careen into maybe taking out some other smaller vessels nice. as it does so. Um, finally, a good roll. I need one roll from Araya Wait. to pilot the ship closer. Come on, Araya. This is with on. a D4. You want it? Watch this be the best roll you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. 18 total, so 28. Plus 10. 28. <laughs> Dodging to the side of that, cr that crashing ship that Penny just took out. Araya dips underneath it, kind of pulling up just at the last second, causing several of the pursuing creatures, these wyvern-like creatures, to slam into the debris, taking them out as she escapes them, kind of like chasing after you, pulling in. You are now pretty close. You can see the hull of the Fenrir up close. This enormous, massive ship. It dwarfs the Storm Chaser completely. This is like sailing the Storm Chaser through a giant city, um, and, you know, kind of pulling up alongside it. You can begin to see that there are these kind of sections of its hull um, where the it's made of like stone or like very dark gray wood, and it has all these like runic sigils carved into it. But those runic sigils are almost you know, person size, like, you know, the lines of them are massive. Um, and you begin to see, like, plates where they're separated, and you can see, like, little gaps where weapons stick out and things like that. This is a pretty good position to jump from. Now, I know it might be scary, but I need you to jump into that whirlwind. 
That's that's a good path right now, right through all the uh, the mess. I'll move it. I'll get rid of it in time. <laughs> You're gonna move it in time, right? I'm gonna move it in time. I'm gonna okay. move it in time. <laughs> okay. I um, think it's now or never. Yeah. Have we got protection from elements? Yes, we're gonna, yeah, we yeah. can just do all of that. So it's and basically hope will hope will cast. Things. Well, she'll we'll do, do that, that when you land. Yeah. Yeah. Hope's gonna cast protection from cold on Scout and Norfear. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sentry, who are you casting protection from cold on? Uh, and remember, it's concentration. So yeah. if anything happens in the next few seconds, Scout and Norfear. Scout Norfear. So Does she do it on herself? Hope. She hasn't. Uh, she hasn't done it on herself yet. Okay, so she we don't hope. Cast two people. Just, I'll do it on hope. Okay, so those three have protection from cold. Uh, Nova, you are wearing the sort of Enviro leather armor. Ayla, you're just tough as balls. Um, <laughs> I'm, tough as old balls. Uh, sure. So I'm going to cast Death Ward on Nova. Okay. Oh, so you. first time you go to zero, you go to one. All right. Which you get all what the time man? anyway. Um, <laughs> Lucius. Lucius is going to hold an action. Okay. That if he sees them not quite making it to the hull. Mm-hmm. He's going to throw down a wall of ice, which is a, a floor that sticks out from the hole towards us. From the storm us. chaser, so you're going to create like a little... No, no, rain. from the hole. The... Oh, okay. Can you do that? Can you create it from a point far away? From... Okay, yeah, okay. Hmm? Ooh, for distances, that might be pushing it. Like, the storm chaser can't get that close, but maybe you might be able to. It's going to be... I'm going to rage before I go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Scout is going to get his little grapple gun um, and he's going to basically get that ready so that as he jumps, he's going to try and fire that to like lock in place. Um, probably Norfield would have something similar made by Adair as well, like a little kind of Batman grapple gun. So the two of them have kind of got these hand crossbows with little grapple guns kind of like put onto them. Um, I need, and I'm going to have Captain Lucius roll this, I need you to roll 2d6 for me, please. Oh, fuck. That doesn't sound right. Here we go. Five and a one, six. Six. What a swing. So, I would need Nova. I'm going to have just Nova, Ayla, and Hope roll athletics checks to do this jump. Uh. Because the other two have got grapple guns. What did you think a jump was going to be? Yeah. You've, have you got the jump, jump. bless from Sentry? Who yes, the bless would still apply, I would say, I in this scenario. That. So does jump help this at all? Like 29. What jump? They're casting jump on us. Who's casting jump? No. 29. 29, okay. Uh, Hope got a... a jump. 18. <laughs> I rolled a 13 plus a 3, which is a 16 minus 2. Oh. Oh. (laughs) So. Damn. You watch as the five of the infiltration team, you leap from the side of the Storm Chaser. You are all automatically going to take, with resistance, well, except for Ayla, you're going to take 12 points of cold damage. Ayla, you're going to take 25. You feel your body begin to freeze, and like even through the suit, Nova, you can feel this chill kind of spreading through you. The others kind of like shiver for a moment as you sail, floating, soundlessly, wordlessly through astral space. You see creatures streaking past you as the wolf pack and Penny and and, and and Kamara are trying their best to clear the way. The whirlwind from Quill is like sweeping aside as like some of these creatures try and fly in to attack you mid jump. An explosion as one of the Fenrir's weapons c- go off and collide with the, sh- the shields of the Storm Chaser, rock the Storm Chaser to the side, which could have made that jump even harder if you hadn't jumped just a few seconds before. You kind of fly through Scout and, and uh, Norfear. Their little grapple guns hit into the hull as they pull themselves in on the ropes. Ayla, you fly through the air effortlessly with your great strength. You even see Hope with her kind of like making a run up with a horse, leap like a kind of galloping centaur through the air. But Nova, as you do, this is just not something you're used to. As you jump, you just feel that you don't quite have the weight to go. Ayla, Hope, Norfear and Scout all land in pretty much the same place. They land at like one section of of the, the hull currently clamped to the outside of it. Uh, Just to the side of you, there's one of these giant sort of like weapons sticking out. Nova, unfortunately, lands about 200 feet below you. Like, lands into the hull of it, but like, you kind of slam into the side, but separate to your team. There is another one of these kind of like looking kind of like gaps, like almost like a slit through the the stone of the the long ship um, that looks like you might be able to squeeze through, but you would be separated from your team. Uh, 
last thing is I would like all of you to please roll for me uh, a d8 again. Okay. Low is better, remember. Four. Four. Oh. Four. Oh, no. Six. Did you get eight? Oh. Fuck's sake, Rihanna. Sorry. <laughs> Four. Four. <laughs> uh, four. Four. Nova. Four. Lucius. Six. Christ. Century? Eight. Twenty-six. <laughs> uh, so for this one, uh, that is going to be twenty-six points of damage to the the shields on the front and the rear. But okay. Thirty-seven to the sides, as the weapons of the Fenrir are now able to be brought to bear due to some extra damage. Um, the side of the ship. So the back shields are gone, and two points went through. Because okay. it's Points 24 yep. before hit. So you hear Howard like, Oh, Captain, we've lost shields to the rear! I oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't think so anyway! Um, as he kind of calls out. But yeah, so at this point, two points. we are now split into two teams. Uh, two points went to the wow. hole. Storm Chaser. The Storm Chaser cannot linger. If you are stationary, well, you can. I'm going to give you the choice. You can keep the Storm Chaser stationary close to your team. You are completely vulnerable if that happens. Your AC will be drastically reduced and you will take additional damage. If the ship is moving, your AC goes up and you will take less damage from attacks. What are you commanding them to do, Captain? Um, Araya starts circling the underside of the Fenrir. On it, Captain! And you just, she goes into these maneuvers, trying to kind of move around. But this means the Storm Chaser is no longer in range of the infiltration team for any kind of spells or abilities. I will te te tele 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 telepathically communicate. That to infiltration yeah. sneaky team. All right. We'll it is at here, this point, here. <laughs> Storm Chaser team, few seconds after you depart and you begin circling, that you see some creatures that Callus have perhaps warned you may be protecting the Fenrir. Two enormous creatures. One appears to be like a giant serpent with a single red eye, its body made of armor plating, kind of woven in this intricate pattern alongside of it. Remember the big giant snake things from the first Avengers movie? Uh, the big Chitari kind of like big things? Space Looks, whales. Big space whale. Looks like one of those. The second is what I can best describe as an astral kraken. Oh, oh, yes. oh, yes. That's cool. They emerge from the dark side of the Fenrir that you hadn't quite seen yet, swooping around, sensing this impeding threat as all these other kind of creatures swarm around you. That is what the Storm Chaser team are going to have to deal with. Oh, oh, nice, 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 okay. nice, nice, nice. Infiltration team. You are currently separated from Nova. Nova, you, what would you like to do? There are two things I'm thinking. I'm guessing if I activate my sword and Misty Step, it's going to take... Misty Step is only 30 feet. While. You're three, you're 200 feet below them. Okay. I didn't want to activate the charges. That are, what if I flew? You can move at 60 feet, so if you dash, you can go 120 in a round. Or I can Dimension Door in one, but I didn't want to hit Dimension Door that fast. But we just need, we need to get in fast, don't we? Probably. Every second we have, the Storm Chaser is going to be battling, essentially. But it's up to you. I just like, didn't want to hit Dimension Door that fast. It's your call, Nova. We can commu Can we communicate? Yeah, you've got telepathic, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, well, you and, guess, you and Nova can. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. other NPCs can't. I guess we could try and meet you halfway. That's Hope's a really good idea. Hope, Hope will say, like, like, actually, no, Hope can't breathe, but she's like, mm, she's like miming that she might be able to do something. <laughs> So I'll, I'll just give her the thumbs she does, up. She does this. I'll, I'll, I'll just give her a thumbs up. What's that? Oh, so it's gonna, gonna do a thing. Uh, she makes like a swoopy hand motion <laughs> and uh, grabbing, like a lasso. Yes, like a lasso <laughs> motion. I'll, I'll tell Nova. Hope's doing something. She's cooking something up. Just, just. I'll hang fire for a second. See what Hope does. And then... Yeah. Oh, well, Hope, Hope looks like she's waiting for you to get closer. Oh, oh. okay. Okay, start coming towards us. 
In which case, I might I might stick and cast the Misty Step. Yeah. And, and then... And then dash. So and then 30 dash, feet, so and then you can basically, plus, like... Imagine you've 30, got the whole... So you can kind of clamber up, and you're weightless, so you can yeah. basically just, just, just move it like your movement speed, basically. So if I action dash, that would be 30, 60, 90 with... 90 feet. 90 is good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So right. I'll activate my sword. Okay. And... <laughs> teleport up 30 feet, you begin scrambling up the hull of the Fenrir. You're feeling the vibrations as it's firing at the Storm Chaser and all the other ships around you. Boom, 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 scrambling up. You watch as Hope uh, kind of focuses. You watch her horn kind of glow for a moment as a vine grows out of the wood of the ship. The grasping vine reaches down as you reach within 90 feet, wraps around Nova and pulls her up um, towards to the group. Uh, this is going to take a turn because it's a full action for you and it's a full action for Hope to get you there. Yeah. That means I need every... Ayla, you're going to take another 25 cold. Everyone else is going to take another 12. Uh, uh, as you guys are currently in that cold uh, vacuum of astral space. Is there not something you can work on while they're doing that, though? Or? I, I, you tell me. Like, is there something you want to do whilst uh, Hope and Nova are incapacitated? Or, like, dealing their, well, doing their stuff? we're next to an opening to get There's, into Yeah, the you ship, can see right? one of these, like, weapon cannons sticking out of it, yeah. So you could start crawling to get in? Yeah, or, like, you could uh, you could send uh, Scout and Norfear to, like, at least go in there, or, like, you know, you can... It looks like maybe you could be able to squeeze in. Yeah, send Scout to check if we can get in there, if okay. it's safe. Yeah, Scout yeah. actually has the easiest time moving because he's got his little climbing yeah, wheels. Yeah, he's... Um, he fun. will quietly, very quietly, in fact, uh, he kind of like latches on. He like gives you a thumbs up. In fact, Scout can speak because he doesn't need to breathe. So he's like, I'm on it. <laughs> and he kind of he kind of crawls along the side and he sticks his little head in. He crawls in for a moment um, and then he pokes his head back out. And uh, he's a soldier. So I think maybe like this is something you and Ayla, like he will communicate to you like one enemy, like big enemy inside, like... <laughs> Norfear's like Norfear will kind of yeah okay so Norfear will begin sneaking her way along as well it's going to take her a turn to get in position but she'll be ready to attack when you guys want to get ready for a surprise okay. attack I'd say. yeah okay. I'm probably right. just going to get so you'll do the same thing so you and Norfear basically like sneaking yeah, yeah, along yeah. can you make a stealth check for me uh, you would have advantage <laughs> I've rolled a four and a three <laughs> nine nine okay uh, that's right. It's, that you guys so are outside. It's really loud. You um, should. I know. Oh, uh, fuck me. It's not been a good day for my dice, really. That's fine. Uh, so, uh, by the time you catch up, Nova, you're caught up uh, to um, Hope, and mm -hmm. the two of you make your way over towards the thing. What do you want to do? Like, at this point, like, do you want to join Ayla and Norfear, or do you want to pass wall, or are you going to do anything otherwise? Uh, I guess I would. You can see that, like, Norfair, Ayla, and Scout are all positioned at this kind of, like, cannon point. Yeah. I'll keep Nova up. I'll cool. I'll probably tell her telepathically what we're doing as okay. we do it. So do that... you want me to help me attack, or shall I pass while here? Help, it's a big target. Okay, then I'll move into position to help. Um, right. Like, yeah. a st like, yeah. with all of you gathered, with needed. all of you gathered together, you can see that there is basically this gi a giant. Yeah. You see a fire giant manning this kind of weapon, like a turret. Um, but the giant is not right. You see the signs of Hadar corruption. Yeah. Uh, part of their face, not quite their whole haste, but maybe half of like their skull, sort of a quarter of their head, uh, is missing. And you can see that swirling black void. Um, you can see that their body is marked with, um, on their right arm, what appears to be a whole mouth just in their bicep, like a fanged maw. La, 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 la. Uh, and it's just <laughs> yeah. mindlessly like moving this turret and just shooting at anything it can find. Um, meanwhile, uh, on the storm chase. Uh, Captain, what are they? <laughs> okay, rule number I'm... one. Go on. Don't tell Howard what's outside. Okay, okay, okay. Let's keep him focused. Yep. All right, let's batten down the hatches. I am going to need... Don't tell Howard. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Howard, we, we need more power to the engines to get away from the space kraken. <laughs> Back on top, people. Yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell, Ray. Get it! <laughs> what was Don't that? worry, if it's a damage roll for the Storm Chaser, it'll be, it'll be <laughs> yeah. a nat yeah. 20 every time. Yeah, yeah. We're at the back, <laughs> I think. Do you actually know how to read numbers? 
Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like you are, you're rolling really them and they're like, you think every number every is a one. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well just assume it's a one. Yeah. Yeah. This side of the table, fucking cursed. No, I'm well, not doing great I mean, today. My Tom, Tommy Wombus is doing pretty good. Not this initiative, is not. Not this one. I think of this dice out as my best dice today as well. I've crushed your dice. Trade. You're welcome. <laughs> you are the chosen one. Uh, okay. Uh, Quilly Boy. Uh, eight. <laughs> Centwee. Uh, nine. Oh. Do, Lucius. Do your blesses eight. add to this? Nope. No. Not now. Uh, those blesses are only to it. attack rolls. I'm going to say, by the way, a minute has passed, yeah. so the bless is probably What's your gone. Uh, plus three. Yeah, you're. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, plus three. He's before me. Okay. I'll put. Uh... Wait, Wait so we're eight, eight, and nine. Yeah. I'm going to change it. So <laughs> really well. I'm going to just make it easier for me to keep track. Century's now ten. Cool, you're nine. Lucius is eight. Um. So, seeing these creatures coming in, the two, this Astral Dreadnought and the Kraken, uh, begin to bear down on the Storm Chaser. The Astral Dreadnought, this giant serpentine creature, is closer, and you see a streak of starlight impact into the Kraken. Oh. oh. Nice. As you see it slam to the side against the Fenrir, um, as just blasted with sort of starlight magic, as nine tentacles, whack, 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 you see a battle begins to engage between Siaska and the Kraken itself. Um, <laughs> okay. She is going to hold it at bay, Good. but you can see that whilst she is fighting the Kraken, other ships are being destroyed and she's kind of like looking around. She can. She was deflecting some of the Fenrir's attacks. Like, she probably will not be able to hold it for too long. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, in fact, the very first person to act is Danica. Um, hey! Who is just on the deck of the Storm Chaser, gonna just look up and call like, "We're take, we're killing the big ugly thing." Yes. Mm -hmm, yep. Yep. Yes, Absolutely. Please. All the fireballs. <laughs> She's gonna launch a Sorry. fireball at Very this thing, impressive. a heightened fireball. Um, heightened. It, that is a natural one on its saving throw. Uh, oh, oh its saving throw. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I'm, do you know what? To speed things up for myself, I'm just going to do some flat damage to it. Uh, Flamage. Flamage. <laughs> you watch as the creature, this fireball erupts over its mouth, causing parts of it to continue burning and smoldering. It looks like there's an effort to try and resist or like suppress the fire that's affecting it, but there's something about Danica's fire that is just not... Uh, it is burning through whatever resistance this thing has. Adept. Um, she is an elemental adept, very much like Lucius, as it just, she just burns it continuously with this giant fireball. Um, she has stood dead center of the deck, just channeling this fire up at towards it. Uh, oh, uh, can you also, sorry, can uh, Araya please roll um, initiative with a plus, uh, with a minus one for the Storm Chaser? 19, so 18. 18 for the Storm Chaser. <laughs> Where's mine? <laughs> so, on the Storm Chaser's turn, yeah, they would have nice technically gone deserve first. a show of their own. Like. Uh, <laughs> what would you like? So you currently have Kamara, Penny, uh, both on actions. Yep. Um, Araya is basically just, at this point, just trying to keep the ship moving, like constantly, yes. like basically outflying this thing. That's the, her whole action is to do can that. We get but you can have the weapons fire. Can we get Araya to show our side to the monsters? As in, uh, like, turn the ship. She, I can um, certainly set facing. Get Penny to fire first, because the that she has to. Is the the main cannon arm. is only in the front arm. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, all the. Well, one we have uh, Tom. You roll the main cannon for me. So this is a plus seven, is and then you can roll Kamara's cannon uh, with a plus six. Uh, no D fours anymore. Oh, okay. Eight. It's a miss on Kamara's rotary turret. Fourteen on Penny's. Um, Fourteen. I don't know if that's... With a is that with the plus seven? Uh, the twenty-one then. Twenty-one is a hit. Nice. Uh, uh, can you roll five d twelve damage? Ooh. Five d that big well, dice you never use. Yeah, uh, there's yeah. two. All right. Uh, that is a fourteen. Oh my god! Another twelve, so twenty-six. And this one, this one's great. 26, 34. Yeah. 34 points yummy, of yummy. damage. Oh. Oh. You're right? Oh. Um. <laughs> What's it like rolling high over there, bud? It's just what adrenaline feels like. <laughs> <laughs> so you watch as that main cannon carves like a, just a wound up this creature's thing. It looks down as a reaction, it is going to use its entropic eye. It, you see that red eye? 
it actually opens as if it was closed by a second lid, and there is just this swirling black void with a single red pinprick in the middle, and it directs it at the cannon, and you begin to see the whole cannon just depowers from magic. Oh! It's going to use its uh, entropic eye to disable the magic of the main cannon. Okay. Well, at least that's to be you because they're turning anyway. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Turn it around and we'll slowly middle finger it and go <laughs> drop. <laughs> so then you want to have like that fire and then basically Orion drift the storm chaser into yes. the side. Okay. Just put the biggest shields that we have. Biggest shields right now. where you can. All right, yep, yeah, she can absolutely do that. I'm going to make a Tokyo check for drifting it. Style. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Uh, after that, unfortunately, it is the Dreadnought's go. The Dreadnought is basically going to slam in with its huge jaws and claws and just try and tear into the storm this chaser. This is the serpent like creature. This is the serpent like creature, the astral Dreadnought, a slightly modified one for those of you at home who know the stats. Uh, that is going to be uh, 35 to hit the Storm Chaser. Uh, <laughs> the side shield is going to take 36 points of force damage. Uh, it is then going to attempt to claw twice. The first one is going to... 32 is going to hit. The second one is also going to hit. Uh, 31. Oh. That's going to be 19 twice, so that is... 38 more points of damage to the side shields. <laughs> you watch as the wolf pack immediately become frightened. The wolf pack, like, seeing this thing right in front of them, its claws near, penet trying to penetrate through the shielding to get them, they just panic. Oh, wait, that was the hull, wasn't it? That was to the shields on the side. Yeah, that's down to 11. That was a big hit. I mean, it's still up, I guess. Yeah. Um, once the shields, once the shields go down, by the way, it will be able to attack creatures on the deck. Mm. Um, so once once shields are broken, it can then yeah. attack. Four. Uh, yeah, but that Howard, has Howard had a go yet? Uh, no, he's in the engine room. He can take an action if you'd like him to. Yeah, can we get him to replenish shields? Yes, D10 yes. plus three to the side. No biggie, Howard. To the side. <laughs> uh, to the side. Seven. Eight. I'm trying my best, sir, but I don't have the power. <laughs> You do, Howard. It's inside you. No, but it's not in the ship, though. Get it um, out of you. <laughs> all right. Uh, after that, shields. we go to Sentry. Um, I would like to run up to this dreadnought boy and... What is the reach? You have 10 foot ten reach. 10 foot reach on Starbreaker. Okay. You are just in range. Okay, I'm going to go... It, this thing is about 10 feet to the side of the ship. Nice. All righty. It's only because you've got Starbreaker. Get him! Most melee weapons will not wreck. And I'd like to bonus action activate Spirit Shroud as well at level four. Okay. That'll give me an extra 2d8. Okay. Ba -ba 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 oh, it's coming Whoa. back, it's coming back, it's coming back, everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Rock your back there. 19 plus 13 to hit. Yeah. Uh, yes, that will hit. Lovely, Thank jubbly, you. lovely, jubbly. <laughs> right, I've got maths to do. Four. <laughs> it's warm in here. I don't know what it's that it is, actually. I don't know where I'm going with this. Level one, She's level just two, a flesh level three. three. It's all coming up. Level four. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody. Gather round. The bab is playing D&D &D right now. <laughs> Gather round. All right, here we go. Fourteen. 16, Little Babby Astral Dreadnought. 20, 20, 20, 20. I think the bad rolls better though. Yeah. Yeah. 30 oh, plus 37 off, for the first hit. That's the first attack. I just saw these at night and realized that Rhiannon's doing her damage thing again. And yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's damage. I was like, she's rolling a lot of dice there. Just it's all good, it's all good. Just read things. Just read things. I'm gonna hit it again. Okay, you wake up, 75 D8 just dropped. This one might, the second one might not hit, it's 18. 18 total yeah. is not enough. Mm -hmm. It kind of turns its armored carapace to the side, deflecting the blow against its hardened hide. Dang. Kind of sensing the power of the first one, it just kind of roars and bellows in your direction. Right. End of your turn? Uh, yes, please. At the end of your turn, the Dreadnought will use a legendary action. Sounds like a real foot. I need... Uh, each creature within 60 feet of the Dreadnought, which is everybody on the Storm Chaser, <laughs> oh, to make God. a wisdom saving throw. Oh. He might be a good thing Before I'm not I get to... <laughs> This is not a spell. Before I get to Bacon. Don't forget you have yep. that thing where the first, like, Hadar touched trying to corrupt your mind. You had something like a bonus or a... Yes. Or something. You do. You have an inspiration you... on it. Yep. Yeah. Just remember that. Thanks. 
That's Unfortunately, Danica, Max, and Protector all fail. Advantage. If this is a Hadar touch, um, and my it, influence. It is Hadar touch. Like um, uh, I don't know Mara. if that's a good look or a bad look draw. Howard. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> I don't Araya. think anyone's good. Um, Penny and Howard pass. Uh, Araya and Kamara fail. So, you said this wasn't a spell, but does the uh, plus three plus three or? would, yeah. Okay. Yep. I'd say that unfortunately, but the only thing is, I would say sentries doesn't apply to Lucius and Araya as she is at the side of the ship and they are at the back near the command oh. center. Oh, I guess Stay. I also am as well, right? Yeah. Oh, a sick 12. Okay. I got an 12. unnatural 20. Sentry passes. I got an unnatural 20. Uh, cool passes, unfortunately. That's sentry. right. That's why so, I was showing you this. Eight. Uh, I got success means you take half damage. Um, this is 26 okay. psychic damage, so 13 to those of you who passed. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. The three wolf pack on the deck who were frightened uh, collapse. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they were three. not long. Immediately. Wait. <laughs> they are, I will say, they are not dead. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to kill them in one hit, but they are heavily wounded. If they don't get healed, they will probably die the next Sean, week. Kenny, Jeff. Um, you see the oh, other no. the, the NPCs, like Max and Protector, both kind of clutch their heads for a moment. Danica looks a little bit more pained um, as she yeah. kind of like clutches her head. Penny, Kamara, a lot of them look pretty rough as well. Like this thing just oh. bellows. It's like a psychic screech as this thing just. <laughs> And you're, that hurt you me? feel like your your visions flood your mind. This image of red death just overwhelming your senses. Um, I feel like I just lovely. took psychic damage lovely. from Mark Screech. Quill. Um, I'm going to bonus action summon Elder Quill because I'm going to need these concentrations. Do I still have my whirlwind? Or is that like long gone a minute now? I'd say that was for the process of getting you. Sure. I'd say that any of your resources spent during that time. How long does it last? Uh, a minute, I think. If it's a minute, so, I'd say it's gone. Yeah. Uh, yes, one minute. Um, well, I'm going to get Elder Quill out anyway because I'm going to okay. need him eventually. I'm going to cast, I'm going to move down towards the more center of the ship and I'm going to cast Aura of Life. Nice. Um, so anything that starts its turn with zero HP, uh, Gains one. Okay. All right. Um, I'll say while that's active NPCs, as long as they're in the area, they won't immediately die because they do normally die on zero HP. And resistance to necrotic damage. Okay. All right. Next turn. Um, end of turn. End of turn. Lucius. Can I hit the Kraken at 60 feet or no? Yeah. I'm going to try and knock it so it. Like hit it with what? Um, it's going to be a frostbite, so it's a con save. What's the range on frostbite? 60, 60 feet. feet. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Con save. 19 to beat. Uh, 14. Oh. Um, I'll do 46 damage. That is 17. 17 more points of damage. And then throw my dike. Oh, no, that's a cantrip. It's so a cantrip. Mind. Doesn't count. Um, All right. Does that knock its concentration on the eye? No. It's not a concentration effect. Yeah. It's just opening its eye. Yeah. Just doing it. Just doing it, mate. It's like uh, anything else, Lucius? It. Uh, was it resist? Does it look resistant to that? It does not. Does not seem to be resistant. Cool. I'm adept anyway, but it's good to know. Mm-hmm. It's good to know. End of turn. Um. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, Max and Protector. Uh, Max is going to move next to Quill. Hey, buddy. Kiss. <laughs> 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 He's going to stand in front of you between you and the creature and just say, uh, I'll protect you, Kalek, and just sort of like take a stance. Um, and he's going to name you as his ward. Uh, so you're currently warded by Max. As long as you are within five feet of Max, he picks you first. Uh, you basically, he can take attacks for you, um, but also you have the benefits of cover. So plus two AC, plus two to deck saving throws. Nice, okay. Um, protector he's is fainted. going to he's move next to Danica, you who looks quite injured. No, and he's basically going to do the same thing. Um, he doesn't have a ranged weapon, unfortunately. Uh, so he's just going to take a readied action that if this thing gets through the shields, he'll take a swing at it. Um, and that's all that Protector can do on this round. Can I call out to Araya? How are you doing, Araya? 
ah, managing, and she's just, you can see Araya is just focused on, like, trying to put as much distance as she can between all of these other ships, using the Fenrir almost to, like, block enemy fire where she can, but this Dreadnought is just pursuing you like a, like a, you know, fish in a pond, like it is just not giving up, it's, it's relentless. Whereas, like, a lot of the other vessels are fighting the Valkyrian ships, and, you know, Siaska's around there blasting stuff, um, but it is pretty desperate. Okay. Uh, with that, we're going to jump back to Team Infiltration. Um, so, you see this giant. What do you guys do? Uh, sneak attack. All right. Uh, I think all of us together just... Yeah. So, basically, what it. I would like is you're basically capturing this guy unawares. Uh, so, uh, I am just going to say, for the purposes of this, as long as you hit with one attack each, you will probably defeat this guy. So, I just need an <gasps> attack roll from Ayla, Nova... Uh, and then I will make it for Norfear. Um, Hope probably won't attack uh, because she's not a very good combatant, but Scout will pull out his crossbow and take a shot with it. Um, Can I be mildly complicated and summon my Echo to attack from the Echo? Sure. Doesn't really matter. I mean, it's the same more chances to, hit, to be I suppose. Fair. Uh, well, I'm just going to do it as one attack for everybody, and like that's oh, okay. going to, like, I'm just going to kind of simplify this bit because it's just yeah, maybe meant cause... to like breach moment. Like you're kind of catching this one, one giant unguarded. Yeah. One reckless. Attack. Yeah, you can reckless it if you'd like. Yeah. Back it. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, seven, Woo. 18. Uh, 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did Taylor get? 34. 400. 34 hits. Yep, yep, that's fine. Uh, Norfield will also strike. Uh, scout shot, unfortunately, does go a bit wide and he does miss. But I'd say between Norfear, Ayla, and uh, Nova, with your combined number of attacks, Ayla, assuming that you go in there and batter with two attacks, and, and Norfear literally stabbing this thing in the throat with a sneak attack, uh, the three of you combined do manage to take down this giant. And you can see that this is not probably a, a full strength giant. This is like a, almost like a zombie giant, like an undead thrall. It's been placed here to just fire the gun. Um, so drone. it's pretty easy to take out. It's like a drone. Um, you no, no, no. It was really difficult. We did it <laughs> yeah, really sure. hard. Yeah. Um, you got 40,000 XP just for that one. <laughs> when you step in, the coldness of the astral space immediately evaporates. You are now inside. You almost feel yourself kind of slipping through, similar to the storm chase of that like uh, atmospheric barrier. You feel yourself slipping through that as you land in a pretty large chamber, probably about sort of... 30 feet by 30 feet, mainly dominated by this enormous telescopic-like gun uh, that this giant is currently wielding. Um, you see that there is a doorway that seems to lead out into the rest of the vessel. Um, when we came onto the ship, was that one of many guns that were like that? So each gun, we can assume, probably has its own little room. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with that, however, that is going to be where we're Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> that went really far. Oh, you can oh, have it oh. at the end of the section. Well, uh, can you read that, please? That's huh? a message for you. What There's nothing written on it. Yeah, there is. No, it's not. Yeah, there is. There's literally nothing written on it. Yeah, at the is. top. <laughs> at the top. No. It's... Pencil. What? Oh, yeah. No, it's my other one. Ah! <laughs> Oh, what you what you it? Bit to end the episode what's your, on. What, what's your other one? Say? It said pee poo pee poo. All right. Okay. Wow. Didn't on that one. You're so thank you very much. Sports, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us, what's everybody. That? Uh, that is it for today's episode. We will see you next time for more High Rollers of Remus. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Bye, baby. Let's rock. Oh, hello there, friends. Guess who's got a little secret? Guess oh, who's got a little it you? It's me! What's what the is secret? Will what you is tell it? me? Right we tell! We've got live! Oh, 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 we've got him! Oh, Wait, so I'm live though. No. You guys aren't? No, we're none of us alive. Trot, we haven't been live for six years. <laughs> <laughs> and you were there? And you were there? I'm so uh, tired no, that I genuinely was like, what's the secret? What's the secret? <laughs> I thought uh, it was a twist in the story. It's a, no, it's a loopy little, uh, we pre-recorded this because I am away a lot upcoming, so we're trying to pre-record a bunch of stuff. Uh, to make sure we get this out so we can finish up this whole campaign. Yes. Um, but thank you very much. Yes. If you did donate or anything like that, we will read it out when we yes. do a live episode as soon as we can. Please do keep the, the support and the donations. We love to read your messages especially yeah. as well. So please do keep all of that good stuff coming. Yeah. Um, but we will be back on Sunday. You'll see this episode. We'll be back next Sunday as well. Um, so do stay tuned and we will see you then for more Hiroli. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.